This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. Red Hot Comic Book Movie News. Shooting up your butthole. The Weekly Planet. The Weekly Planet. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday. With me as always is my co-host, Nick Mason. I'm here. We're yeah, both here. We're both here to talk the news of the week, aren't we, Mason? Number one news of the week. The whole world's out of toilet paper, apparently. Apparently so. How's your toilet paper situation? I'm okay. I think it's a hot topic. We're hitting all the hot topics the straight hot, up top. One of the hottest topics. And this will be an artifact of the future Yeah. when the world's been destroyed and, and the only entertainment is this episode of this podcast that somebody's found on like an iPhone that's rapidly losing power. And they're like, what is this? Yeah. What's this mystical box? And they push the button. It's like, the world's out of toilet paper. <laughs> and they're like, what's toilet paper? That explains all the skeletons in the toilet paper aisle. <laughs> right? Everybody destroyed themselves at supermarkets. We get the who gives a crap toilet yeah, paper. Uh-huh. So we have a lot. Yeah, anyway. well, everybody who has that subscription has yeah. too much. Oh, and, and the other thing is you can't order it from there now again at the moment because they're out of stock. But if you've already got a subscription, you just keep getting it. Yeah, for sure. So the only like Because there was part of me that's like, well, I do need toilet paper. So I'm like, do I engage in this because I, I genuinely need toilet paper? But then I'm like... It's not worth me punching some dude or getting punched <laughs> and, say, and getting filmed and being on the internet. You say that now, but when you're really busted in a couple of weeks. <laughs> in a couple, yeah. I just You've use been holding like, it in for weeks. I'd, I'd use newspaper. Uh-huh. I'd use tissues. <laughs> whatever. There are, there are alternatives. Yeah, but you say, again, you say that now, but you're assuming that you're the only one. You're the only genius who's thought of that. Yeah. You're not, though. No, I know. So I could have a shower. That's true. You know what I mean? Oh, there you go. All right. No toilet paper required. Yeah, but again, you're assuming you're the only person <laughs> who's thought of using your shower. Yeah. But three seashells. Oh, my you ever God. Ever think about that? I've thought about it. Yeah, yeah, I've seen the memes. Yeah. Well, he mentioned a thing about, like, you're supposed to scoop it out. Like, he said really? it was a, That's said it's what a it joke. Was. Yeah, okay. I think it was a joke. Oh, Because he was sick okay. of people asking him. Also, a guy who used to shit in the shower, apparently, at Planet Hollywood. Oh, yeah, that's we true. Talked about we that? talked about that. Yeah, when our friends Alan and Andy yeah. were here, yeah. So if we're out of toilet paper and they're not making any more. We're still talking about this. Well, yeah, just quickly. <laughs> it means society is, is crumbled. Oh, yeah. 100%. So they're, everyone's going to run out anyway. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't, you know. That's why everybody in the future switched to like fur loincloths, I guess. Ah, like in the show C, potentially, with Jason Momoa. Yeah, maybe, yeah. But that's maybe on Apple Plus or on a different streaming service. <laughs> yes, exactly. Anyway, news of the week, Mason. We're going to talk about Last of Us. We're going to talk about four... The new Batmobile. Mm-hmm. Then we've got some hot topics, don't we? About With The new Batmobile, it's also the old Batmobile. That's in many right, ways. in many ways. And, uh, and then James Bond, of course, it was delayed. And then we're, we're going to talk about long delayed movies that eventually came out. A bit of a summary up the top. I That's like right. it. I'll be doing you put it. it in real smoothly this Thank week. Thank you I very much. It. Okay, so Tessa Thompson has spoken to Entertainment Tonight. Remember that show that was on in the 90s? Hi, I'm Bob Newhart. Hey, I'm the woman this week. If you're in Australia, this is the only entertainment news that you get here. We're on the set of Rob Schneider's crap thing he's making. What do you think? I wish I was dead. Thanks, Rob Schneider. <laughs> but he's not, is he? No. <laughs> Have you seen real Rob? It's terrible. He sent me a clip of one. You showed me a clip of it once. He goes to a coffee shop. It's the very then, first and clip. Some, and then somebody asks him for an autograph or something. No, he, he doesn't, he doesn't gets, tip enough. He doesn't tip enough. And then he's like, and then he goes on a big rant about how he's how famous. Rich he is and and how hot his wife is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's really good. I heard sounds he, bad. I heard that he paid Netflix to be on that or something. To be on his own show. Yeah, like they didn't pay for it the way that they normally buy things because they don't want it. Huh. Anyway, if, you, if you're a real Rob fan, hit us up. Hit us up. Yeah. Why? <laughs> That's my question. Anyway, they spoke to Entertainment Tonight and Christian Bale, uh, according to Tessa Thompson, is the, the villain of Thor. Ah, oh, because he he was we knew he was going to be on it or he's in yes. talks at least. Okay, he's on. It was mentioned that he was going to be an intergalactic character of sorts. That okay. was mentioned in the past. And this is what it is. So no, I don't know who that is. No more details? No. Just intergalactic. Intergalactic. But see, here's the thing. Intergalactic in the Marvel, in the cinematic universe, mm. could include really anything. Like it could yes, be space. It could be... The galaxy, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, the galaxy. It could be like mythological, but a lot of the mythological stuff comes from space. Yeah. So I think the, the rumor, because people on the internet, including us, like to speculate based on previous roles... Yes. So I think a lot of toilet people, paper. So yeah, exactly. So a lot of people have suggested he's going to be the current Minotaur, the uh, the, okay. the the Marvel Comics Minotaur, because he's uh, uh, civilian identity is this guy called Dario Agger, who is like a Patrick Bateman style 
like ah. slick CEO kind of thing. Like he's he's the head of the Roxon Corporation, who we've seen yeah right in many things. So it was in it was in all the three Iron Mans, I think at least mentioned. I it was in first, Daredevil. Yeah, it was in Peggy Carter. Yeah, yeah. It's in the first it was in Iron Agent Man. Carter, Agent Carter, sorry, yeah. <laughs> It's in the first Iron Man. You see, like the billboard in the background. Yeah, that's of right. The Iron Manga fight, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. maybe you get Iron Man gets mm. thrown through it. So I mean, that's possible. So he's been uh, sort of floated as maybe that's that's the guy. That idea, yeah. yeah. Um, I can't see him putting on like a big crazy outfit either. No, so you just he's normal and then he transforms into yeah. Minotaur and then it's all CG. And he's like, ah, oh, now you've unleashed, etc. Exactly. And I think there was a, a storyline fairly recently. Mm. In the comics, where he and the Rocks and Corporation make a deal with Malekith of the Dark Elves, right. where it's who we saw in Thor: The Worst Thor, and they they'll take over the planet, and then Rocks and Corporation would be able to like strip mine the whole planet, okay, like the Earth. So you can't do that now because too late. There's nothing yeah. left. Yeah, but <laughs> they are, they are on Earth though, and if he's a slick businessman on Earth, maybe he's been like, let me buy this Asgard, and they're like, you're not a slick businessman. Right. I mean, you are, but yeah. you're also like, you're another thing. You're two yeah. things. Two things. <laughs> And we're not having it. Let's we're, fight. Yeah, that's right. Okay. You'll be one thing and that's it. <laughs> Bash. But anyway, you could be anyone, really. Yeah. We don't know. That, that's the thing. There is literally thousands of other options as, as yeah. characters he could be. Yeah. So. I think he's going to, whatever he is, he's going to look look a lot like Christian Bale and whatever the yeah, thing is. Yeah, I that see. That's the thing. I can't imagine him. But, I mean, you know. I know he's done Batman and whatever. He's but got kids though, right? Yeah, but he's also got a million billion dollars. Well, that's and he's also been Batman. Yeah. So I mean, but I guess at this, he's obviously game. But do you think he's game now to put on? Yeah. A, well, I think maybe it, not I, an uncomfortable suit. No, but I'm thinking, I'm thinking like your grandmaster kind of thing. Yes. Like you put on a golden yeah, robe or exactly whatever, what a thinking, weird, yeah. a weird soul patch yeah. drawn on your face or whatever. Mm. Like I think he'd do that, especially if his kids are like, "Dad, you got to be in this. Yeah. You got to be in the take whatever role. Yeah. To be in this Marvel universe. Or we won't love you. Yeah. We're Batman's lame, Dad. Yeah. Dad. 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 You're not even the most recent <laughs> Batman, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> Who is? We don't know. <laughs> Dad. <laughs> We, we like, don't see commercial and critical success, Dad. <laughs> we just see the Batman with the big stuff, bat- batarangs, explosions, Dad. It looks Dad. like he could still do it. Yeah, probably. I mean, it doesn't mean that long, has it? No. The last one was like eight years ago. But do you think he's also he's probably also done with physical transformations? Oh, definitely. I think he's mentioned that. Yeah, right. I think the breaking point was the last movie where he put on, he played uh, Dick Cheney, did he play? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And, or maybe, and one of the several other times that he's done that, either been the machinist. big or small and, you know, yep. throughout uh-huh. the years. So he's, he's not going to be Toad in the Mario Brothers remake? <laughs> no, <laughs> but he said to... <laughs> I'm so little. <laughs> because he said to Gary Oldman, because Gary Oldman played Winston Churchill, he's like, how much weight did you put on to play Winston Churchill? That's incredible. And he's like, none, it's prosthetics. <laughs> it's, and then yeah. he's like, what am I you doing? Can do, yeah, you can do that, <laughs> Christian Bale. <laughs> but it didn't used to look good, though. I feel like it's only yeah. recent that they've kind of nailed it. Have you seen Bombshell? Because they no, put J- John no. Lithgow in like a huge like fake kind of rubber neck. Yeah, right. It looks amazing. Yeah, right. Yeah, so. I also wonder how much of Christian Bale's early notoriety was based on the idea that he could do that. Mm. Because, you know, he's a, he's a very talented actor, but there's a lot of very talented actors who haven't hit it big. I, I'm wondering how much of that is just the idea of he could gain, you know, become sort of super rock solid for American Psycho yeah. and then become like a skeleton for the machinist or whatever. Yeah. And people are like, this guy is committed to acting. Yeah. <laughs> He's a real we're, actor. Yeah, we're all in the industry and we, yeah, we see right. that and we respect it. Yeah, yeah, we've got a weird cadence. We've got a weird way of speaking here. Well, they're all in their inner circles, aren't they? Yeah, that's they? true. Yeah. They're hot yeah. tubs. Yeah, what, they're, what hot tubs. To? they're in hot tubs with like cult robes on. Yeah. <laughs> you probably heard this. Oh, uh, the Last of Us is being <laughs> developed into a HBO series. I did say that. The under, video game. That's right. Under Craig uh, Mazin. Oh, uh, he's the Chernobyl guy? He's the Chernobyl guy. He's the scary movie three and four guy. He's the superhero movie guy. He's the hangover two and three guy. He's the Huntsman's Winter's War guy. He's the union busting guy. Boo. <laughs> that's what I say. <laughs> is he really? Boo to him, yeah. Oh, I, I think so. Do you want to, what, what, what's that about specifically? No, the writers, uh, the writers union. He's one yeah. of those guys who's like, hey, I think writers should be paid less. But not me, though. He's right. I, oh, okay, right. I'm with him. Uh-huh. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's no good. I'll uh, sh- I'll look into that. And if that's true, I'll leave this bit in. Or I won't look into it. And I'll just leave it in as And we'll is. get sued? <laughs> okay. Cool. What's he going to do? Yeah, he, doesn't, he doesn't have the backing of a union. What's he going to come well, out with? Well, that's so true, right? His billions of dollars? Ha, He's not is. that rich, that's actually. Right. These are exclusively hits, except for the Huntsman's Winter War. But every, one of, every other one of these made money. All right, cool. Yeah. Uh, Chernobyl's great. It's interesting that he's 
I find that fascinating. They did Chernobyl and all those other things. Yeah, right. So was he just kind of doing that for the paycheck? Was it? Was he just like, I really just want to do something? I now feel like a lot of people, a lot of writers and producers, sort of ride that wave. Mm. Like, um, you know, everybody who, everybody, you know, all the Seth Seth Rogen yeah. as an example, and Evan Goldberg switched from like you're knocked ups and et cetera to yeah. preacher and another thing. We're doing Invincible at the moment, animated. There you go. But they yeah. do. More serious stuff as well. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Whatever those things happen to oh, Yeah, be. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Those things I cannot name. Yeah, I know, right? What but are we talking about? The Last of Us. Yes. There we go. Uh-huh. Uh, it's also going to be uh, co written by Neil Druckmann, who's uh, creative head at Naughty Dog. He might even be the head. Oh. Moment. But uh, a video game adaptation written by a video game yes. producer. That's pretty wild. And it will possibly also adapt sequel elements. So I wasn't, I've never been super keen on a. Last now of the Us Last of Us movie. is a sort of is it's a zombie apocalypse esque yeah. movie. You haven't played it? No, I haven't played it, but it's mm. it's it's a man and a young girl and yep. is she, is, it's is Hugh she Jackman did... and Alan Page. Okay, yeah, right. Or yeah, James yeah. Rowland and Alan Page. Yeah, but it's definitely Alan Page. But yes. Alan Page has never been involved. So there no. was, if I recall, there were two video games that came out roughly similar times. Yep. One of which had Alan Page. The actual actor it was Alan called Page Beyond or something. And she was voicing a character, and at roughly the same time, there was this game that came out with a character who looked very similar to Ellen yes. Page, but Ellen Page did not provide the voice. That is correct. There yes. we go. Okay. But uh, so you haven't played it? No. Then. Yeah, you totally should. It's. It sounds like notice. a long escort mission. It me. was. It, yeah, but it's good. Okay. It's the peak of like the PlayStation Three. It's kind oh. of the last, probably not the last, but it's considered like the last of AAA. Us. The game. Yes, title because it's from the same guys who did Uncharted. It's the same. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. And then they remastered it for the PS4, and it looks spectacular on both. I've only played through it once because uh-huh. it's quite harrowing. Yeah, but it's, right. But it's not an escort mission because she's the, quite talented. She's quite talented, and you don't really have to worry about he it. He plays both of them at some point. Uh spoiler alert. Oh, yes. But there's also DLC where you can, if you bought it now, it would be included. Oh, yeah, like, right. Which I only, I only played like maybe a year ago. I played uh-huh. the DLC for it because I'd never yeah. played it. But it's mostly him. Uh-huh. But the new game seems to be her, but I'm sure that you'll switch it up. Yeah, right. Because uh-huh. she's older in the in the newer one. Speaking of spinoffs, did you see the trailer for uh, Half-Life Alex? Oh, yeah, it's a VR. Virtual reality, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm not. It, I mean, it looks good, but who is... I don't have a... Nobody does, yeah. that's the thing. I mean, people do. Yeah. But I, I, I've never invested in, in one of those, yeah. have you? No, mm. no, I don't think. It's, I mean, you know, you can always get the. Maybe you can't. I don't know. You, you just you plug your phone into the box you put on your. Oh, I've got one of those. Do they work was, for these sort of things? Yeah, no, because it's yeah, like a, you right. need like the proper PC. Yeah, okay, whatever. Right, right, uh-huh. Yeah. No, I would. I never really. I never played it really. It's Did you fascinating. Play it? I played the original Half Life yeah. games. Yeah. I got the orange box once, and I played through the first one, and then I just uh-huh. kind of didn't. Yeah, get right. Around to it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting that you know Valve, the the company that mm. made them. Now, because they created Steam, they, yeah. they just make money hand over fist, yes. doing not a lot. It's fascinating to me they would make a game at all. Yeah. Is this even them, Valve? I think no, it, it is, is them. Oh, it is, yeah, right. Because well, they own it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Because it seems they just completely lost interest in making video games because they just put literally anything on the Steam store. And just it's cha-ching. an absolute shit show, that Steam store. <laughs> oh, I'm aware. Yeah. Just the junk that they put uh-huh. up on there. Just, yeah, yeah. you know, like asset flips where people just buy a bunch of cows. And then just put them in a field and like you get a shotgun and it's called cow killer or whatever. And then they'll sell it for what, however many bucks and there's uh-huh. a million of those. Yeah, right. And nobody removes them because there's nobody watching it. Oh, so sure. it's just okay, this right. okay. never ending nice. nightmare. Well, time to go back in the never ending nightmare for <laughs> Half Life, Alex. That's <laughs> what I say. Once you get a VR thing. Yeah, but and that's the thing. And like I like a, I do yeah. like it. And for VR, a lot of people, it's not... also like okay, do I? I've got to I've got to set this up and then like move my coffee table and you know. it's getting better where you can just yeah. get a free headset that's not tethered yeah. to the wall. Yeah, right. So the tech is yeah definitely improving, but I like I want to play that Vader Immortal game. Have you oh, seen yeah. that? Uh-huh, yeah. And there's a few other things that I've kind of but there's nothing that I'm like I'm gonna sink money into this. Well, that's yet. the thing, and this also it looks kind of interesting, and like a VR game is often, especially like a mm. first person shooter, is like you know impressive generally, yeah. but also. It's not a sequel to Half Life Two. That's yeah. what people. It's also fascinating to me because that's what people want. People want Half Life Three because yeah. the second one ended on a cliffhanger. Yeah. Well, not a cliffhanger, but like now we're gonna go kick some alien ass. Yeah, you know, it's one of those kind of things. And people have been waiting for more than a decade at this point yeah. for for a continuation of that. And they're like, this is the story of Alex before she met Gordon Freeman. <laughs> blah blah blah. So terrific. Yeah. Does the second one start where he gets off the train, or is it the first one that starts with him getting off the train? The f- first one starts, he's getting off the train. Okay, which is the one with the friendly head, cr- head crab? Is that the second one? That's the second one. Okay, maybe I have played the second one then. Yeah, I just yeah. haven't finished the it. Se- yeah. The second one starts, you get, you at the end of the first one, mm. spoilers for whenever Half-Life 
a one million, came out million, million, years million years ago. ago. At the end of the first one, this guy, uh, this alien in a like a human suit, basically mm. is like, "Do you want to come work for me?" And he puts you in, I don't know, hypersleep or something like yeah. that. And then when you wake up, Earth's already been destroyed. And he's like, "Time to do some stuff." And you're like, "Couldn't you have unfrozen me <laughs> several years ago when I could have done something about this?" I got and this like, crowbar. I'm ready yeah, to go. Right? Yeah. Uh-huh. It's the one with the gravity gun, right? Yes. Yeah, yep. gravity guns. Mm-hmm. Maybe they can make another portal as well. I yeah. really like those games. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Okay, as someone who has played it, mm. what would set this apart from every other zombie TV series and movie? I, well, it's very character-driven. Because if you know, you're not playing it, yes, if you're just watching you, it. You do the character stuff well. Okay. And people have said, just cast you, Jackman, or cast Carl Urban. I think it would be uh-huh. a good choice. I always, I'm always James also Rowland. fascinated by... <laughs> Do, do, Carl, do Carl Urban and Hugh Jackman get any say in this? <laughs> no. They just get a letter in the mail and it's like, you're the guy from Last of Us now. And they're like, oh, i got to do research the, whatever this is. <laughs> oh, my God. People got asked me endless questions about this thing I don't yeah. know anything about. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's my favourite thing. You know they, they open. You a fan of the video games? No, but I've become a fan. Yeah. You can just say no, it's fine. Hugh Jackman goes to his mailbox, he opens the letter, he's, he's outside, he opens the mailbox and he's like, you've been drafted into The Last of Us. And then he just looks up and he sees all these video game fans like in hoodies, <laughs> in t- like in, in the bushes outside his house. And he's like, they already know. <laughs> <laughs> he runs inside real quick and he just Googles The Last of Us. He's like, Deb, do you know anything about The Last of Us? And she's like, no. I'm 50. I don't know anything about The Last of Us. Yeah. Great stuff. Yeah. Anyway, we got a first look at the Batmobile. We did. Uh, I love it. I think I it's like great. I like it too. I, a lot of people are down on it, but you know why that is? Because it's, it's a new pop culture thing. Oh, yeah. And everybody hates everything. That's why I'm down on it. Right? I said I loved it. I don't love it. I hate <laughs> it, Mason. No, no I do uh, like it. Here's the thing. I think what's interesting about it is that it looks quite similar in my eyes to, and I'll look it up and find it. It's got shades of a few things, including yeah. the 60s Batmobile, it seems. It does, and it looks to me quite a lot like in in the 80s and 90s, Norm Brayfogel, the late Norm Brayfogel, was uh, mm. the artist on Batman, and he's, his version of the Batmobile oh, yeah, is kind of like yeah. a... Yeah, it's like a... Uh, it was based on a Maserati, apparently. It's quite okay. sleek. Uh, and, and what people I feel... You just pulled the engine out of it so you can see it. Right. It's dangerous. Yeah. yeah. What I think people, because we've seen so many versions of the Batmobile at this point that are all tanks, yeah, we forget the Batmobile is supposed to be a car. It's a car, isn't it? Yeah. It's mostly a car. And this is supposed to be set. This is a Batman year two or three. Yeah. So why wouldn't it be a car? Why you can't know? you have an 18-foot-long Batmobile like right? you did yeah. in Tim Burton one? Oh, my God. How yeah. long would it take to turn around a corner? I'm not surprised. Use the grappling hook. Exactly. I'm also not surprised it's this because... James, James, James. Mm. Yes, imagine, yes, yes. imagine that, that Batmobile is going in the car wash. It's going to the car wash at the service station. Oh, my God. It's got to shoot out the grappling hook. <laughs> going to go around the corner. Okay, James, James, James. I'm ready. I'm oh, man. Imagine, what scenario imagine, do you have? Imagine that version of the Batmobile. He gives the keys to a valet. He's got a valet parked the Batmobile. <laughs> you're like, that's the button for the grappling hooks. And you're like, what? Why is there grappling hooks? Just press it you'll, if you need you'll, it. Know. you'll know. <laughs> you'll know. You'll know when you try to turn it. Yeah, you're about to crash into a corner, building. Yeah. Well, that's the thing as well. It's obviously they've gone more practical mm-hmm. than a lot of the stuff that they've had. Yeah. Because even the... I, I like the Justice League one, aside from the yeah. million guns on it. Uh-huh. But this is like stripped back way, way more. So it's it's a car. <laughs> nice. You probably see him do some gear shifting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He doesn't have to climb in through the roof or whatever. <laughs> yeah. For a lot of these ones that oh he has Oh my to God. Do. When was the last time we saw a Batmobile <laughs> where he, he didn't did... come in through the roof? I feel like one of them opened up at the side like a DeLorean, but I might be imagining. Maybe one of the Schumachers did it? Schumacher ones? I think that's still the roof. Yeah. I the mean, tumbler even, was the even roof, the, right? even the, Yeah, and even the 60s Batmobile. Get it, yeah. No, they, it, doors. Had, it had doors, but it also had an open roof. So you could they, just leave I think they just leapt into it, yeah. yeah. Imagine taking that to the car wash. They'd be like, do you have a roof for this? And you'd be like, I don't have a roof for this. <laughs> for this. Oh, my God. But if you get the seats wet, I'll kill you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm the 60s Batman, and I'm a murderer, I think. <laughs> <laughs> he's an inadvertent murderer. Yeah, he doesn't know. Yeah. He doesn't know what he's doing. But no, I like it. And I think having seen the suit and the bike and all the other... Uh, picture of Colin Farrell and whatever. Uh-huh. This is very much in line with what we've been getting. For sure. I think if we had have gotten like very specifically comic book versions, like the Ben Affleck one, mm-hmm. and then we had have got this, it maybe would have been a weird fit. Yeah, right. But I think it's yeah. I think it seems to fit the universe. And again, I think they'll it'll change as the movies. Yeah, yeah. Progress. And it's just it looks a little blade runner as well, I feel. Yeah. But maybe that's just the lighting. It's all the smoke. Yeah, it's the smoke. Or the mist. Yeah, yeah, or sure. Fog. Speaking of Ben Affleck, did you see Ben Affleck's? He did his uh, GQ something, GQ something, something. something my iconic I, roles, blah, blah, blah. I was blah. talking to you before the show about this because I didn't realise that Vanity Fair do this and GQ do that. Do they just talk about every movie you've been in or whatever? Mm, yeah. 
But you said it's the same company. It's the same right? company. Yeah. It's the same publishing company, yeah. Yeah. Do you reckon they're yeah. rival websites with like those son of the bitches over they at GQ? They got Affleck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but we got Harrison Ford, so. Also, GQ doesn't do the line, like the, the timeline graph. Oh, yeah, that's right. So they're just yeah, like, yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah, Like okay. Batman, Superman, whatever. Yeah, so. Really makes mm. you think. Yeah. No, I thought that was really interesting. Yeah. He looks well as well. He does. That's good, good yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. mm. And he was quite open about, and he was like, I enjoyed making, he was like, I enjoyed making these movies, Batman v Superman, much more than Justice League. Sure. Yeah. I mean, that was also around the time of the divorce and like clearly yeah. he'd started drinking again and a lot of things yeah, were right. going on. So yeah, I can understand that. And I like that he was just like, I probably, I'm not really into this, so I'm not going to do it because there's someone who would would want to do it. Yeah, right, exactly. Like yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was some interesting insights on like him and working with Kevin Smith and yeah. stuff like that, which all was really interesting. Yeah, which all led into him directing. And yeah, I do want to see Slam Dunk, but not The Booze. Uh, yeah, 100%. Movie. Yeah. Which is now on IMDb trivia. Is uh, yeah, somebody put it up there. If you go, if you go to the way back on IMDb and you click on the trivia tab, oh, it, says also, it. it also, did they? No, the way back. That means you have to go. Is that what you mean? Like the Way Back Machine? No, the movie The Way Back. Oh, is called. that what it's actually called? The movie's <laughs> called The Way Back. I thought you were talking about if you go to, because someone had deleted it from the no, trivia, so I no thought you were saying The Way Back Machine. No, it's still, as far as I can know, it's still there. You go to the, the, the movie The Way Back and you go to the trivia tab and it says also known as Slam Dunk but not Laboose. So it's pretty good. <laughs> Terrific. Let me be clear, anyone can add trivia to that. Oh, excellent. I Obviously. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. No one looks at that either because often, because I'll scan it for when we do a caramel amount of garbage or a commentary or whatever. Uh -huh. And a lot of it's doubled up or contradictory. Like yeah, nobody's, right. nobody's checking that. Mm. Good. Yes. <laughs> Ruin it. Everybody. Oh yes. Uh, Jurassic world mm -hmm. is getting a spin off series. This is why Did I we know that already. No. Oh, there is one. There's an animated one. This is a different one. This what is was live the thing action. we saw the, a while back. That, that was short the film. short film, whatever. That was okay. a precursor to Jurassic. Okay. Well, then world. this is big news. James. Yeah, it is. This is huge news. It's by the Jurassic outpost site. Uh huh. I always wonder about specific fan sites like this and like this one and like the Indiana Jones one and the, you know, like your Twilights or whatever. Uh -huh. How much play do these get like over time? If you own this, do you own like several others about other properties? You know what I mean? Oh, really good question. Yeah. You think there's some sort of gossip mogul out there? Mm. Wow. It's just chewing up all the, all the spe very specific sites. And not, not, I mean, obviously this is a huge property, but uh -huh. Jurassic Park wasn't a thing for like 15 years, you know, at one point. Right. So anyway. <laughs> Apparently it's going to be in the same country. You just want to know about this person, right? Yeah, what you are you just, up to? Right? What did you do for that 15 years? <laughs> uh, it'll, it'll be set in the same continuity as Jurassic World and the site goes on to You'd claim, hope so. Yeah, well, that's right. The, the show will this like is set in a parallel universe. <laughs> it's like Jurassic World, but it's not Jurassic World. The, the dinosaurs are people and vice versa, except, you know. Oh, my God. Oh my that's God. a better idea. It's basically the Mario Brothers movie. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's yeah. what they've done. Oh, it's that parallel universe. Yeah, okay. it's that one. Mm -hmm. A bad one. The site uh, goes on to claim that this show will likely debut on the Peacock streaming service in 2021 or 22. I don't know what that is. Never heard of that. Oh, it'll be NBC. Yeah, well, that makes sense, Peacock, doesn't it? Probably, sure. yeah. Okay, uh -huh. great. Uh, that's another one that we have to get or it won't come here at all, which is really Oh, 100% exciting. it will not. Yeah, <laughs> we'll get it on Foxtel probably. Yeah. So we'll you can it. sort of guess, I feel like, whenever somebody's like, here's, here's a new premium cable, mm. whatever, a premium streaming service, you can sort of guess based on the content where it's going to go. Like in Australia, yeah. is it going to appear on Australian Netflix? Is it going to appear on Stan? Because it's going to be stuck on cable and we'll never watch it. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Uh, what have they got at the moment? they got Westworld at the moment, don't they? Yeah. It's coming back soon. They can keep your Game of Thrones. I don't want it. <laughs> That's right. I don't want it. Yeah. Isn't it amazing that was the biggest show in the world and everyone's just like, fuck that show. Yeah, now right? Everybody's just universally like, no, I they can't even, it. <laughs> if you If you hadn't mentioned it just now, I would have gone the rest of the week not thinking about it <laughs> at all. It never would have crossed my mind. It was the biggest show in the world for, yeah. such, for like yeah. six years. That's right. And then they botched the ending and everyone's yeah. just like, forget it. We don't want it. That's what you get, Game That's of Thrones. Get. I wonder how this show's going to look though, this on... Streaming service. I mean, things look good now, don't they? They sure do. They're probably pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've got a video this week actually on how green screen is kind of being phased out for this new LED technology. Yeah, right. Uh, like, you know, big screens and such. Yeah, for the Mandalorian. Yeah. But I could t go through like, because it used to be like rear projection and then it was green screen and uh -huh. it's kind of shifted to this. But now it's um, live backgrounds or yeah, something like that. Yeah, it's really like. fascinating. It's, it's being rendered live or yeah. something like that. It's, I, I did a video on it. I can can't you remember. add stuff in real quick? I yeah, you it? can. Yeah. Whoa. I don't know. You, you watch a video if you want. So you, somebody could be filming the Mandalorian. Yeah. And then they could just throw in like a train coming out. The it's not so much say. like that. You, you need to have the final render like the 24 hours before. James, just leaving but, my dreams, all right? But if it's landscapes and stuff. Yeah, you have can a train like, coming through. No, but oh. you can like shift mountains in the background. Oh, and they like, put oh, a train that through. Look better. No, 
There's no trains in the Mandalorian for one, Mason. Bet there is. It's a space western, not a regular what western. What about Rogue One? That had a train in it. No, you're thinking of Solo. Oh, yeah. And it was a space train. <laughs> it was a space It's true. doesn't make any sense. Why would they have a train in that? they got spaceships. I mean, don't don't fall down that road hole. The rabbit hole. I just realised that Star Wars doesn't make any sense, and now I hate it. There we go. And I don't. Un- uh, what do you mean hyperspace can be? You can shoot it at another ship or whatever. What do they do that in every movie or whatever? <laughs> My favourite this time around was the guys who were like, "Why do those things have wheels on them? Well, there's speeders. Why do the ATATs have legs? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> just let, sometimes things Why would have you legs. Plant the ATAT so far away. Yeah, you plant them up close. Right, just walk them in. Why not just trade them all in for a big bomb? <laughs> yes. Hey, I got this star destroyer. Should I put some walkers on it? No, just more big bombs. I reckon. Yeah, Drop the bombs. Yeah, as many as you can fit. Yeah. Do you want legs on the bombs? I'm the no, cap- I want legs on the bombs. I'm the captain of this star destroyer. <laughs> I've worked my way up the ranks of the Imperial Navy, but I sound like this. How did I do it? I must be very competent. <laughs> Because I'm certainly not charismatic. What's wrong with my voice? Anyway, more bombs, please. <laughs> uh, Star Trek news. Oh, or yeah, or not Star Trek news. Oh, what? Uh, Simon Pegg talked to Games Radar. He said uh, th- he was very frank about how the movies they're not making anymore. Oh. Of his versions anyway. He said, they don't make Marvel money. They make maybe $500 million at the most, which is true. The yeah. biggest movies make that. And he said, and they cost $200 million. And you got to make three times that to make a profit. And I don't feel like the last one, they didn't really take advantage of the 50th anniversary. Uh-huh. Uh, the regime at the time dropped the ball in the promo for the film and they've lost momentum because of Anton Yelchin. And that was a huge blow to the family and our enthusiasm. So he's like, I don't know. Is there going to be another one? Yeah, that is no. very frank. Yeah. Yeah. So presumably, no, because he's right. very much like, no, they fucked it. Yeah, right. Because he wrote the <laughs> he most wrote of the last three, one. Yeah, yeah. Or a lot of it. Yeah. Okay. And so that's he... the best one, I think, uh, yeah. of the new ones. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So, yeah, okay, well, that, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Mm. Again, the Star Trek movies, because we watched Generations quite recently. Ooh, uh, it's coming up on Tuesday, actually. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Um, I feel like those came out in the era where you could make a movie on, you know, the smell of an oily rag budget kind of thing. It looked like a cost of no money. Right, and, it, and also a lot of those Star Trek, like the next-gen Star mm. Trek movies – Often used reuse sets from other stuff, yeah. and you know old old episodes of the TV series. They're like, oh, we got this control panel. Let's just move got this it in old and uniform. Whatever. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I feel, and and now less aliens and more like just drawing lines on a dude's head or whatever. <laughs> exactly. You know? And being like, he's a mortal, and you're like, <laughs> well, the lines do make him different from a regular man. So I guess that makes sense. Um, yeah, and that was the like an era where you could make a movie for fifty million dollars, but I guess now you're not allowed to. So. No, you're not allowed to, mate. So. It's one million, and then a two hundred yeah. million dollar movie. And they, as we discovered in doing Generations, they used that same Klingon warbird explosion that they used in every movie from the eighties. Yeah. It's in most of those movies uh-huh. somehow. Yeah, and that, and then it was in ninety four. They went, yeah, we'll just use that again. Who cares? I guess mm. there is some stuff they put money into in that movie, but the the big like. Finale is just old men running around a, a rock <laughs> rough face, housing, yeah. Which is what it was in the sixties as yeah. well. That's all it was. Yeah, yeah. Just it was very <laughs> on this, upon the second watching of that for yeah. me, it was very reminiscent. So could we do? I mean, is, does that mean that there is now? Is that cleared a pathway for Tarantino's version? Because yeah, he could do it on the cheap, definitely. Like relative to a two hundred million dollar yeah. movie, he would. I'm sure he would relish. You know, being knowing Quinn, knowing QT as well as I do, I feel he would absolutely relish just. Putting down styrofoam rocks, yeah. and cardboard control panels and whatever, and yeah. just having running around swearing. I can imagine him just doing, being like, "This is the like just doing another Captain Kirk nineteen sixties like continuation of just the show." That's what like, I'm thinking. Yeah. Uh, so you mean even like in that era? Just yeah, being yeah, like, for sure. Because there was like supposed to be a be. fourth season or whatever it was that they never made. Uh, that third, became, third season. Third yeah. season that became the movies. Yeah, it was going to be. They they ended it. Wait, maybe it was the fourth season. It was one of them. Yeah, I think they. Like, they I think they. I think were, Roddenberry did one and two, and then left on three. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah they were gonna they were gonna cancel it after two. Then they got a third, and then they were like, "We're gonna do another season," but it didn't work mm. out. So then they were like, "We're gonna do Star Trek Two, which is a new yeah season," and then it became Star Trek: The Motion Picture. Eventually, the one of the worst ones. <laughs> yes. Well, actually, I remember where I heard this. Movies with Mikey. Have you seen him? No. He's on YouTube. He's really good. Uh, he recently did one like in the history of Star Trek or the first half and Gene Roddenberry uh-huh. and his kind of checkered past and all of oh. those things and the start of how Star Trek began and Star Trek Star they Trek should, they call, said did he call Star, it Star Trek, Trek. okay right said, yeah. yes uh-huh. there's a train in it the thing that you love I do <laughs> yeah it's really good so people should definitely check that out it's a recent video that he did mm. and Mason Star Wars news oh yeah uh, did you hear 
the Star Wars novelization has come out or is coming out. And oh, there's oh, sites, Rise of Skywalker? Yes, and there's sites that are drip-feeding new information from oh, so that. so it's not out yet? It may be. I don't know. I haven't read it, and I won't. But <laughs> Well, you, you, definitively, if it's not out, you can't read it. No, so but if it was out, I still wouldn't All I know it. about this is, because I've I'd, I'd heard, I'd heard about this on Twitter, yeah. as I understand it, the reveal this time around mm. of the endless reveals about the Rise of Skywalker that are meant to make us enjoy the movie more, but it's making everybody enjoy the movie less, <laughs> yeah. is that... I think it's just making people remember the movie, which is upsetting. Yeah. Them. So, so spoilers for Rise of Skywalker. If you haven't seen it at this point, yeah. The final, the the revelation of Rey is that her father was the son of Emperor Palpatine. Yep. And a, a woman who and we a, don't know anything about. But apparently, the reveal in the novel is that the man who is her father wasn't actually the son of Palpatine, but just a clone of Palpatine. Yeah. Okay. But he wasn't like good at being Palpatine. Yeah, right. So if you make a clone of Palpatine... Yes. So he's just Palpatine They get again. their own brains? Because it also was revealed among the many reveals. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like the kiss wasn't a romantic kiss. It was like a kiss of acknowledgement and friendship. Okay, sure. Didn't feel that way. Didn't Have you ever kissed way. anybody like that? No. <laughs> but anyway. But it doesn't matter though. That's the thing. Like why change that? They right. liked, they loved each other. So what? Yeah. They did. Okay, whatever. Uh-huh. Just lean into it. Anyway, uh, the, the Emperor was a clone. Because we didn't really know what... So the emperor, the emperor we saw in, yes. in the movie, he was a clone of yep. the previous emperor, because, but he'd be gone all scabby. Because when he felt... There's a there's an extract that they, somebody posted, again, if the book is out or not. Where or if this is real. Or if it's real, where he's falling down the Death Star shaft. He's like, how did this happen kind of thing. And he's kind of <laughs> in a monologue. And then he's Freeze like... Freeze frame records. Crash. Yeah, pretty much. And he's like, uh-huh. luckily I've got a plan for this. I've got a body already waiting for me or whatever. But it's not quite ready, and which is why it's all... And he's trapped in it and it's dying. Okay, and then he but transfers dying, his but into also it. like he's in it for thirty years, <laughs> so it's not. Really, yeah, he's probably that, dying at about the same rate he was he dying could, anyway. He could, he could clone several Snokes in that. Yeah, he had a so, Snoke tank. That's true, he did, <laughs> <laughs> and a Snoke stack <laughs> for all the effluent that comes out of a Snoke. Absolutely. All the so Snoke, if all if the snoke needs, stink comes out a, of the Snoke yeah, stack. If he needs a Snoke break, he just grabs one. <laughs> that's right. Just steps outside as yep. a quick Snoke break. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Snoke alarm. <laughs> yeah, there's so another. There's another. If a one. Snoke gets out, yeah, for sure. <laughs> and, you have to, and you have to hit. It's in the roof. It's real yeah. annoying. You're gonna get your lightsaber out. You gotta tap it. You gotta tap the button to switch it off. Remember to get your Snoke alarm's battery changed. Don't forget. Don't forget every six months or something. Uh, what are we talking about? Oh yeah. So so this would suggest that when you make a clone, yeah, it can either be an empty-headed clone. Yep. Or you can make a clone that's its own guy. That can run about. It's a separate clone. I I assume, and I do not know, Uh that the one that's him, but young, was a baby, like they did in The Clone Wars. Right, okay. Uh And the the other one they made, they went, what if we also made one that's 100 years old as well? (laughs) I mean, okay, how about this? What if the... What, maybe what happens is if you clone somebody, mm. the clone could grow up to be a separate person yeah. unless you stick your soul in it. Yeah, that's And possible, then it okay. takes it over. So maybe both of these clones could have been and had their own lives and, and families and letterboxes. Yeah. But then, <laughs> Letterbox. but then Palpatine <laughs> sticks his spirit into it. Yeah, he's like, I got you. Yeah, and then he's in, and then he's in the body, but sure. then the other one ran off. <laughs> Yeah. Have to get a letterbox. He didn't. Yeah, he had a Snoke alarm, but he didn't have the. <laughs> That's right. My son has a clone alarm. It's also possible, I'd imagine, because if alarm. he wants to rule forever, yes, it would be suspicious if he didn't die, where yeah. he just grew, up, grew another body and went. This is the new senator coming up, and he's going to take over. Oh, well, it, again, it worked for Lex Luthor. It didn't. It did, didn't it? Mind. Yeah. Exactly. Anyway, uh, so it's whatever. It's good, I right. guess. But doesn't that also mean that? I don't know what it means. <laughs> But doesn't it just mean that if he could just transfer his brain into a snow into a why did he do it? An emperor clone. Why couldn't he just transfer his brain into a ray clone as well? I don't well, it know. said that he was trapped in the body of oh, this dying okay, right, one right, for right. whatever reason because of the claw. Yeah, the claw had him. Yeah, yeah. But then when he sucked the powers out of them, he's like, "Oh, the two become one." And uh-huh. and his clothes changed. Changed. Did they? To like beautiful red velvet robes. Oh yeah, I remember that. Okay. And yeah. then he had all the scars in his head. Even that doesn't. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's a good movie, though. Yeah. Some, no, I disagree. Something, disagree. Something, man. No, I was just know. kidding. That was a trap. I trapped you. Yeah. But you know what, though? I, I can like uh, people do like it, mm. and that's fine because Star Wars is whatever you want it to be, and you can like a, whatever amounts of it that you want. 
or none, which seems to be like, the case. No, there's no. But you must you must <laughs> have some opinion on them, though. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Because if you don't, you're ostracized. You'd be That's like, right. I don't know. I've never seen a star. Oh, you God, you haven't seen it. <laughs> what are you even doing? Last bit of news, Mason. Oh, yeah. Uh, Bond news. Bond. Uh, turns out, um, there's plenty of time for you to get your affairs in order. That's right. <laughs> if you're on the way out, is what I'm saying. If you are dying, and you need more time. To die. To die. You have a, a, a bountiful <laughs> surplus of time in which to die. Say goodbye to your loved ones. That's right. Throw a party or two. Uh-huh. Write some letters. Put them in your, your mailbox. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> because there's quite a lot of time to there's die. Because it's been time. delayed. Yeah. Uh, the new Bond film was supposed to be out next month and now till November because of the coronavirus, which mm. is ruining everything. Yep. Thanks a lot, coronavirus. Mm. Why can't you be like the swine flu virus? That went away, didn't it? This will also go away. Yes, but it hasn't gone away yet, Mason. That's true. If you're listening to this the day that this comes out, then you know that to be true. That is very true. Yeah. Presumably this is a financial decision because that's the only reason why anybody oh, because does if, anything. Because nobody's going out to the movies. Because or they suspect that it might not be. Yeah, right. But they think also it might cost them in the long run uh, because... You know, you shift a movie date and things change and marketing budgets. Have, or they've already been gearing up to this and then they're going yeah, to right. gear up again. And maybe you, I mean, I'm sure maybe a lot the of... the wind gets taken out of it. Yeah, and I'm sure a lot of the time they're like, okay, we're going to put it right here because there's no other competition for the mm. movie. And then you put it in November and something else is out. There was something out the, around that time that, I can't remember what it is, but it's pretty big also. Is it the coronavirus vaccine? Yeah, it's coming back. Because people will be going to that. Yeah. They'll be going to the coronavirus vaccine. It's really exciting. Getting the vaccine. Can't and then wait to get it. Be like, they'll be like, why, why isn't anybody seeing James <laughs> What would you say? New James Bond or the coronavirus, coronavirus vaccine? vaccine? Ooh, tough one. Mm. His last outing is James Bond. That's true. And but you might, probably but could might, survive the coronavirus. But it might be my last outing is of me yeah, being Yeah, but you're in the age bracket where you're probably, like, and, this, and you also, you don't have like an ailment. You know what they should do, team mm. up. You get the coronavirus vaccine and a digital download. <laughs> Perfect. Right? Which James Bond movie did he have coronas in it? Or did he just, they just make him film an ad separately oh, on a boat? Oh, yeah, I can't remember. It might, might have been what? Quantum. Might have been around Quantum. Yeah, it might have been that, I think, yeah. yeah. So there you go. Uh, I'm kind of disappointed, to be honest. Oh, thank you very yeah. much to one of the listeners. Mm. Uh, uh, I've got his name here. I listen to this in the edit. Is it me? That's not you. Oh. No. But uh, I think on the previous episode, I mentioned how much I would enjoy if the final uh, 40 minutes of, <laughs> yes. of, uh, of this movie, yes. No Time to Die, was in fact just... Uh, the Aston Martin spinning around for 40 minutes, just spinning and shooting. With um, the James Bond fame. Exactly. Uh, and this from uh, listener Pooj, who uh, who put it up on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's it's just that. And Straight up. What you should definitely do, if you just go to YouTube, it's on my uh, Twitter page, but if you just you go to YouTube, look up Aston Martin 40 minutes. It's the first result, <laughs> as you might imagine. Is it really? Yeah, I think so. Wow. Um, and uh, like look, what I'm, if you're at work... Just turn your speakers on your computer all the way up. Just just way up. <laughs> yeah, it's what, yeah, it's there. 2,000 views. There you go. Not bad, Mason. Well, this will give us 2,005 views. No, it will. No dislikes. Oh, I'm wow. I not like yet. There you go. Done. 221. Very good. Good, good times. This is from Braden Cooper. A quick question here. Can anyone, can you see any more big films beside uh, 007 being delayed because of the coronavirus? Oh, maybe. Because we've got a... Well, Black Widow, I think, is still happening. Quiet Place is still happening. Bloodshot is out this week. That's still happening. That's right. How do you uh, think that's going to do? Considering I had no... Until someone on the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group mm. pointed it out, I had no idea that it was coming out next week, that it was on the way. Do you think it's going to Hellboy? As in, like... Yeah, maybe. People won't yeah. know it's out. And also, as, as many people on the internet have pointed out, why would you build, like, a genetically engineered nanite super soldier out of a guy who's in his 50s? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Did he? Yeah, I don't know. Well, is he in his fifties though? I mean, yeah, yeah. But like in in Hollywood, oh, in the reality. they're like he's uh, thirty five or whatever. He's you know? not thirty five. Yeah, but he is, isn't he? <laughs> no, he is not. <laughs> I'm putting a line in the sand right here. He's not a thirty five year old man. Yeah. Well, look. If, I, I didn't know. I didn't. If they're invulnerable, impenetrable nanites, it doesn't matter who you. How put old them you in. are? That's true. Yeah. It doesn't matter, does mm, that's it? That's right. Yeah. There's no age restriction on it. That's it's true. like having money. You can date whoever <laughs> you want, whatever age you are. Uh-huh, if you've got a lot of money, true, it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, that's coming out next week, but I had no idea. So surprise yeah. everyone. That's not going to do well. I, it wouldn't surprise me if they delay. Oh, they're going to delay things in China because they have to mm. because they're shutting down literally everything yeah. and quarantining everyone. So that the 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 movie industry is going to take a huge hit this year because yeah. of that. Um because I know uh, my dad's just legs and, and where elves or whatever uh-huh. came out this week. Not here apparently. And um it, it it was a slightly lower 
turn out than that, what they expected and okay. people think they may, may be in the coronavirus and people staying at home. So who's to say really? Yeah. But uh, off the back of that. Well, I was going to say just before, uh, mm. Daniel Craig's had bad luck in terms of. Bond movies. Bond, yeah. Well, Bond movies and Quantum, mm. s- situations out of his, his control kind of ruining his run yeah. on Bond in a, in a lot of ways because there was the, the writer's strike yeah. where he and the director had to do scene, write scenes themselves or yep. something. Yep. So exactly. And this, a, a virus. And that means he has to, has to sit on the shelf for him for six months and he has to talk about it for another six months. Oh my God. Because he also and did... And the rest of his life, they're yeah. going to be asking him questions about And the rest of his life. Because he just did SNL. As well, oh, yeah, yeah. So he's gonna have to keep doing. He's gonna SNL. have to keep doing it every week. Yep. He was, I've seen some clips. He's he's good. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he seems like he has a sense of humor. About he's himself. gonna keep having to hear that announcer go, Daryl Hammond. <laughs> he's he's trapped in the nineties. Oh, okay. I don't know who Daryl Hammond is. <laughs> right. What's it's the guy who was on SNL? Okay, cool. he did like a Clinton impression. Ah, oh, all right. Did yeah. he didn't get any movies? No, I don't think so. Okay, good on him. I'm glad. Yeah, I mean, being on TV it's a big deal. That's right. Not for Daryl Hammond. Fuck if I know who he is. <laughs> Anyways, mate, no, good on him. So, uh, so Nor McDonald. I don't know McDonald. You don't know McDonald. Of course I do. So off the back of this, uh, we thought, why not talk about long delayed movies? Yeah. Uh, we've got a string of them here. We've done our I research, guess. haven't we, Mason? Yes. We've crunched the numbers. These are movies that also have to have come out. Okay. So, you, so not currently in the So we can't say now. the New Mutants. Okay. Because... It looks like but it's I mean, coming out. I mean, we have said the new mutants now. Yes. It's too late to not say it. Because I think we need some kind of rating system, and I've, I've knocked one up here. Uh-huh. Uh, I've, I've workshopped it just with okay, my I'm wife. I'm excited and to hear spoke it. spoke to some friends. And what did your wife think uh, of it? It's, uh, it's, it's worth it or blah it. So if it's no good, you're like, blah it. Very good. What do you think? What did your wife think? I didn't. That was just me. I didn't, I didn't <laughs> workshop it. it <laughs> what did your friends think? Nobody. It was just me. Just you? Okay, right. What do you think? I love it. So, and that's worth all your wives and all your friends, as far as I'm concerned. So, I don't think Quantum was delayed. I was going to say we could talk about the writer strike, and there was stuff delayed and cancelled, but mm. there was a lot of stuff that just the writer strike was happening and it just powered on through, and then yeah. crap stuff came out. Yes, Transformers yeah. Two was in the midst of that, and it was abysmal. But I think that would have been about the same. I, I don't think it no, would have mattered. There's look. I'm sure at the time I thought about that, but I have seen some of. I'm sure I've seen some of that movie since then, yeah. and it would never have occurred to me that the quality of those movies suffered at one. It took a dip because of a writer's strike. That is definitively the worst one. I yeah, feel. maybe it's not the weirdest one, but it's the worst one I feel overall. What's but the I don't, weirdest one? Four. The one with the where he's like, check it out, I can bang this girl because of this weird legal loophole. Yeah, off. yeah, yeah. That scene that is not necessary for to be in there at all. Or the dragon one. They're all weird. But <laughs> but, but two. But at least I remember bits from that. But two's just boring and bad. Two's got a devastator. Oh yeah, that's boring and bad. Yeah, it is boring. It yeah. doesn't even look like devastator. But then right. again, nothing looks like anything in that. Yep. Anyway, the one that I, well, the first one that I came across was the cabin in the woods. You remember yeah. this movie? I do remember. So this this movie came out. It only came out after the Avengers, I think. But it was, yes. but it was, but it, because it's they're both directed by Joss Whedon. I no, think. oh, they was written by Joss Whedon, produced by Joss Whedon. Yes, and okay. written by yeah. But it that one language, I think, because nobody involved had enough juice, yeah, to get it. It released. was shot in two thousand and nine. Because when Drew Goddard did it, that's Drew right. Goddard. There yeah. we go. So when pre the Avengers, mm. Joss Whedon produ- made a lot of things that were fan favorites. But no, otherwise nobody watched. And yeah. it was I, I it, it consistently amazed me whenever he released anything. Yeah, like new. Serenity. Like, and- why you? Why? How do they keep? <laughs> like I like again as someone who was a fan of Buffy and Angel and and uh, Firefly and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Every time a new thing came out from Joss Whedon, I'm like, why do they keep giving you money? Because nobody else is. Yeah. Nobody else is watching these. Yeah. I, uh, but I guess you know. They, he's an, it was a name, and he was. He, yeah. he also wrote things and That's wrote true, four yeah. things. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. then the Avengers came out, and people were like, "Oh, and I think that was also a Chris Hemsworth thing as yeah, well." Yeah, he's made a billion. He's made a billion dollars. Yeah, this, he's got some got some juice. Let's let's see what else is in the yeah in the can. And there was the, the cabin in the woods, which of course has Chris Hemsworth in it. This as also the, as the jock who's going to save the day. Save the day. That's right. Also, apparently, it wasn't just the they didn't really know what to do with it, though. It did seem to be part of it. Uh, it was de- it was supposed to be December 2010, uh-huh. and it was delayed a year to convert it to 3D because it was that era. Remember oh, that right, era? Okay. Yeah, sort of. Yeah. And then because it was a year after Avatar, and then MGM 
Remember they like the bottom. Yes. Uh-huh. Now, remember when MGM like bottomed out hard? Yeah. So Lionsgate then but got But now involved. they're back strength to strength with no time to die. That's right. <laughs> Probably. Eventually. Till they go bankrupt again. Uh, so June of 2012 it came out eventually. So it was supposed to be December of 2010. Uh-huh. And you know what? It's I think it was worth it in the end because I think it's a good movie. It only made $60 million of a $30 million budget. Uh-huh. But it's a... It's a good movie, and it's a cult classic as well. Yeah, like I, think I feel so. like it's like an it, Evil Dead. And it, again, it's one of those movies where I I try my best to not spoil it for anyone. If yeah. anybody's like, "What's the deal with the cabin in the woods?" I'm just like, "You should see it." Just oh, by the way, I'm sorry to everybody who I spoiled. Um, I spoiled last week. Knives out. Knives out. I should. Anyway, have, spoiler alert. <laughs> well, I actually I went back and I edited it out. Yeah, and I right. re-uploaded the file. So I'm sorry. I sure it's been out like four months. Uh-huh. And look. It's your fault for not seeing it, but also <laughs> it's my fault for jumping seeing straight it. into it. Yeah, that's right. It's your fault yeah. for seeing it. Yeah. Uh, before I uh, ask you to do the thing that you're going to say next, oh, yes. so, uh, on the back of um, MGM and also Chris Hemsworth, Red Dawn was filmed in 2009. It was supposed to release in 2010. So that's a rem- that was a remake Make of a, a movie about the, Swayze the, one. the Russians invade a ski resort or something. Yes. <laughs> the Russians invade a ski resort in or America. something. In America. Yeah. You might be like, well, what's the deal? I don't care if the Russians invade a ski resort, but in America. Yeah. You know? <laughs> what do you think of that? Right. Uh, MGM bankruptcies then restricted the uh, the release. Mm-hmm. So it went to November of 2012. And the film was also significantly re-edited with digital effects. Artists erased all traces of the Chinese insignia because that was the idea. Originally, the Chinese were the bad guys. Oh, instead of the Russians. So they wanted to get a release date there. Uh, not, uh, so they, it was all changed to North Koreans. But despite uh, the changes, they don't know that they don't know nothing. Uh, <laughs> despite the changes, it was never released in China, so they went <laughs> out, wow. of, out of their way to do it. They should release a super China's super extra evil edition <laughs> That's on DVD, right. Right? exactly. Yeah, just to really stick it to them. Mm. Uh, what what else though, Mason? Well, here's one here's one that I'm have always been been a big fan of, but I've never seen. I've, look, I've never seen it. Yes. I just enjoy the story of it, and I've never seen it because it's a Terry Gilliam film, and I'm always about. I'm always kind of. But like I know, for a lot of people, Brazil is a. Is I a, hate. We're we'll talking about this. I yeah, hate we've, we've Brazil. Hated, but a lot of people, Brazil's their favorite film. Yeah. But we have both seen it and hated <laughs> it. So we're we're but but um, Terry Gilliam since the 1989 attempted to make a movie called um, the man who the man who killed, killed Don, Quixote. Don Quixote, which is a sort of a a version of the 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 novel Don Quixote. Yes. Which is about essentially about a man who. Reads too many like romantic novels and and decide and he goes mad and he decides to bring back chivalry and he gets his like his the guy who works his field like his farmer who works mm. his fields and he's like you're my squire I'm a knight and, you, and you're a squire and let's go off and wander through like the the country. Seems very Python esque. Yeah, it is very yeah. much so, and I I understand that like why this would appeal to him because yeah. he's you know one of the Pythons. The, but the the variation that they were, were like were like okay let's instead of the sidekick being Sancho Panza who's this. Uh, like a like a, the farmer. Mm. What a, he's going to disappear quite early on in the film, and he's going to be replaced by a guy who was from the twenty first century. Yeah. He got f- flung back through time, and is now Sancho Panza. And he's like, "Whoa, what is this?" But that's crazy not what happens in the newer version because there's the new one who, that came out with Adam Driver. Yes, and oh, Jonathan Price. Also, uh, blur, blur it for Red Dawn. Absolutely, it. It. Yeah, right, yeah, right, right. Jonathan right. Price. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think he's a. They did a play together and he played Don, Don Quixote. Then he went away and came back and this guy's still doing it. And he's like, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> wow, I right. think that's, I do oh. actually want to watch it. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So, um, and Johnny Depp was in it at one yeah, point. It was gonna be, it, initially it was going to be Johnny Depp was in it and Vanessa Paradis, who I think it was, it was his wife at the time. Right. Um, and there's also a, a movie f- that is famously, yeah, so that's famously about. about. So, so uh, when Gilly made 12 Monkeys, mm. which I liked, yeah, I like Twelve Monkeys. You also like Jazz. Yeah, I do. Uh, he got a like, watch the series. Yeah, Apparently he got like good. a filmmaking duo to to work work behind the scenes and make a making of. Mm. And then in the when he was making uh, the Don Quixote film, he got him again to be like, you should make a making of and, and of, of this epic adventure. And this movie was stuck in development hell for so long that they decided to retool their making of into basically a documentary about a movie that was. Doomed. Doomed and was never going to be released, and that's called Lost in La Mancha, mm. which I'm actually sort of, now that I've remembered it, I'm like, I'm kind of psyched to, yeah. to, to Apparently to it's very that. good. Yeah, so, but but the the assortment of, because this was, this was in development for 29 years. 
This, yeah. it, from from him initially reading the novel and being like, I can make a movie of that out of that for it to actually come out. Originally, it was going to be Sean Connery as uh, Don Quixote. Okay. But Gilliam apparently said that like, he was in talks for the production company to do it. But Gilliam objected because Quixote is air and Sean is earth. That was his. So what? Don Quixote is air <laughs> and Sean is earth. What the fuck does that mean? That's all the information <laughs> I have here. But he objected. He's like, no, no, absolutely not. <laughs> I like uh, Jonathan Bryce, yeah. though. I think. Eventually, it, was, it might have been, at one point, it was going to be Nigel Hawthorne, who you might know from Yes Minister. Yes, of course. And Danny DeVito was going to be Sancho Panza. I love that. That's That was yeah. a good combo. Nigel Hawthorne died, didn't he, in like the late 90s? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then the, the studio, Phoenix Pictures, who did Shutter Island and stuff like that. Okay. So they've been around. They gave him a budget that he thought was too low, so he left. He left to do a movie called The Defective Detective, which right. uh, no, also, also never came out. Okay. Um, <laughs> Then there was going to be John Cleese as Coyote, Robin Williams as Panza. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, in the 2000s, a man, an actor named Jean Roquefort was cast as Don Quixote. He spent seven months learning English, oh so he God. could be so he could be oh in this movie. God. Just do it phonetically on the day, man. You'd be fine. Yeah, right. And then they were going to get Johnny Depp as the as the, yes. the, the guy propelled through time. The cast was going to include Miranda Richardson, Christopher Eccleston, Jonathan Price, who was in the yep. actually in in the real version. Um, so. The first location shoot was in a scenic barren area in Spain. Okay. But then the first day of filming, they discovered that it was right near a NATO military base. <laughs> so there was constantly, like, F-16 fighter jets. It was, like a, it was like a military base with a targeting area. So it was like planes flying by and bombs going off or whatever. <laughs> like, it, it'd be like if you were going to buy a house and the real estate agent, like, toured you around it and then you agreed to buy it and then... It, you realise a train went past every <laughs> yeah. 10 minutes or whatever. You yeah, know? absolutely. They, they clearly got tricked into this. It ruined the audio and then Gilliam was like, no, I don't care, I'll fix it in post. Yeah. Which is a bad idea, I feel. Terrible like idea, ultimately, yeah. it, like it never... It you got to ADR everything? Yeah, and it never yeah. looked right. Then there was a flash flood on day two. Love it. So that was pretty exciting. So, uh, and it changed the colour of the cliffs. <laughs> so like all the background was a different colour. So they're like, well, we can't use any of day one yeah. footage anymore. We can't use the audio and we, and we can't use the video. <laughs> so we're going to start again. <laughs> So then it turned out, I think, that the, the film's insurance didn't cover floods. <laughs> oh, my act of God. God. Apparently, also, a lot of the actors had conflicting schedules. Right. Like, But it was only, like day one, a couple of actors showed up and were like, well, I can only do Tuesdays and Thursdays. Yeah. And another actor was like, well, I can only do Wednesdays and Fridays. And they're like, okay, we well, have scenes together, so what do we do? Kind yeah. of thing. So that threw it all out of whack. Is um, something you got to sort out before? All of this is something you can sort out before. I don't understand. He's done. He's, he's done so many movies but before this. That's not this. really his job. So surely no. there's production, production assistants. Yeah, that yeah, have right, right. Well, his, well, maybe Man of Lost in La Mancha is a good movie to watch. I don't know. No. Uh, I think maybe I'll watch it this week if I can no. find it somewhere. Day five, they got started again. But John Roquefort, again, the guy who spent seven months learning English, show you'd be in, in this. They there were a lot of scenes where he had to ride a horse. And act at the same time. You told me this well, before. Well, he was apparently a, funny. he's apparently a very able horseman, yeah. which is you know good. Uh, but apparently, depending on the, the the version you hear, he either had a disc mm. a, a disc in his back, like a damaged, ruptured disc in his back, a discus in his a, back, a discus in his back Lunch, from the know. nearby Olympic Village. <laughs> Somebody threw a discus in his back, or he had like prostate issues, yeah. painful prostate issues, and so. Every, apparently every shot of him riding on a horse, like every every shot was just painful, banging on all his assorted damaged internal organs. So apparently every shot of him was just him like wincing in pain, like every <laughs> single one. So they're like, okay, well none of this is a, none of this is usable, and they just sent it. They had to. They I oh, had a double herniated disc, so they okay. they. Uh, <laughs> And they said so they sent him back to Paris, where he's from. They they spent a few more days being like, okay, we'll just film stuff with everybody else. Sure. And then it was very unclear uh, whether he'd come back. And and Gilliam had spent two years trying to cast this guy. Like oh this was God, his dream yeah. casting kind of thing. Then they had, they eventually c- cancelled the production. And then the like the insurance the the film's investors were like, well, we want our money back, so they had to repay fifteen million dollars of the oh the budget. Uh, then Johnny Depp pulled out, obviously. Right. He's, Got a million other things to do. Yeah, and this is before he was like Captain Jack Johnny. Yeah, Depp he as well. yeah. So he didn't have that much going on. But he's just like, <laughs> do I have to? But I mean, you know, it's it's. I, I'm sure he saw the writing on the wall. Hundred like, percent. Like, I don't want to be doing this for yeah. several years. I'd rather do actual proper work. Yeah. Then Michael Palin was going to step in and play Don Quixote. I um, like that. Robert Duvall was going to be in there. I like that also. Yeah. Um, Johnny Depp signed for two Disney films, and so he was definitely out. Right. Okay. And it stopped for like ten years then, right? Yeah. 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 
Uh, by 2012, Duvall was still potentially attached to the film. <laughs> he would have been good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if you're wondering whether it's worth it or blah, but nice. Yeah, uh-huh. I've got some reviews here. Okay, I'm ready. It's it's weird. The tomato meter in the audience score is 63%, 64%. Okay, so the critics and yeah. the fans are really okay with it. the same, yeah. But there's reviews like a staggering misfire that's both unambitious oh, no. and bloated. So after all the heartache, it looks as, it looks as though Gilliam's dream has turned into something of a nightmare. Uh, that's very good, David Stratton. You know David Stratton. I know Stratton, David Stratton, yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Uh, messy and occasional strain. But there is things that like, it's exactly kind of odd... Uh, Reality skimming fantasy you'd expect, and but I don't think it ended up being. Do you, I don't know. I, I I knew it was out, but I didn't realize it was two years ago. I thought it was right. like three months ago. I honestly oh, okay, had right. no idea. That I had it no came idea out it so came out ago. at all. Yeah. Right. So yeah, they did. They definitely <laughs> they did. I mean, is something like that ever going to be worth it? Really? You know? I don't know. I know. It's I because it's very. I actually do have an example of one on here that I think is worth it. But okay, most of the but time, I, but I am definitely going to watch Lost in La Mancha. Oh, hundred percent. Like. Also, look, I, f- I feel like I don't know, and that's the thing. It's a it's a real Duke Nukem Forever. Yeah. Or whatever the filmic equivalent of that is. Probably the Probably man this. who killed Don Quixote. <laughs> but this is the poster that came out in 2018. What is that's nothing. It's a 2002 poster. That's is what horror- that is. And you don't want to put Adam Driver in the middle of that, right? Because he's right now. It looks like a Resident point. Evil poster. It does, yeah. yeah. It looks like a, the, the poster from The Count of Monte Cristo from 2002. Oh, my God. Yes, please. Out. I love that movie. Anyway, that, that <laughs> movie's a disaster, so yeah. nah, good on him. Here's, here's one I got for you, Mason. Okay, I'm ready. World War Z. Uh, the budget of that was $125 million and shot in July of 2011. I thought you were going to say shot in Geelong. It was shot in Geelong. Wow. Well. Uh, it's filmed uh, and then City late by the bay. Then in October of 2011, they uh-huh. filmed the climactic battle of the film set in Russia. Uh-huh. I don't know if you remember that movie. It doesn't have a climactic no, battle scene set in Russia. It doesn't. Yeah. There's a climatic, climactic scene set near a vending machine. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what it is. So it's set, but apparently though, around this time, there was a where it was filmed. The Hungarian uh, counterterrorism center raided the warehouse where the guns had been delivered for using uh, as props in the film. Uh-huh. They, there was 85 assault, assault rifles, sniper, rifle, sniper rifles, and handguns that had been flown into Budapest overnight on a private aircraft. But the film's producers have failed to clear the delivery with Hungarian, author, Hungarian authorities. And while the import documentation indicated that the weapons had been disabled, all were found to be fully functional. Oh, no, it's a real gun. <laughs> real guns. Wow. On February 10th, 2012. And was that an accident or were they like, let's well, fire some real it says, guns? It says on February 10th, 2012, the charges were dropped after investigators were unable, unable to identify exactly which organisation or person had ownership rights. Therefore, they could not establish which party was criminally liable. Huh. Presumably the people who sent the guns though, right? Or order the guns. Yeah, but, I mean, it depends on, I guess also, it depends if the, on co- the circumstances. If the cops find a bunch of guns in somebody's house, yeah. they're not like... Well, there's no receipts for these guns. <laughs> so I guess no harm, no foul. Yeah. They're like, we should probably figure it, this out. <laughs> Let's follow a train of evidence yeah. and, and determine that. But they're like, no, we'll just give up, I reckon. Yeah. The balloon budgeted to $190 million. The ending set in you mean Russia. The budget was... bloomed. What did I say? You said the balloon budgeted. The balloon no budgeted. Sense. Yeah, it did big time. <laughs> That's the industry speak. You probably don't remember no, 2012. Yeah. That's what they used to oh, say. Okay, right. It was a 3D. It was a different time. Oh, no, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, 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 sure. You imagine a big. 3D balloon kind of. Yeah, all right. You know, it's coming out at you in the screen. No, I cannot. I'm too scared of it. <laughs> so they changed the ending where Brad Pitt <laughs> drinks a Pepsi or whatever. Yeah, that's right. Which I think works better because apparently he was also like, why don't we make something that's more kind of in line with the character? Because he wasn't like an action man, was he? And it was going to be him like mowing yeah. down zombies. Mm, and he was a handsome doctor a handsome or something. handsome doctor or something. Mm. Also, Paramount changed the scene in the film in which the characters speculate that the uh, zombie outbreak originated in China in the hopes to landing, uh, of landing a film distribution deal in that country. Oh, yeah. Uh, which didn't happen. Right. <laughs> so, again, they tried to get into that market. Uh, they pushed it six months to June of 2013, and it ended up making $540 million. So it Seems did like make its money back. Yeah. And it was going to get a sequel, and then that went development hell, development hell, and Brad Pitt left. And I think who was going to do it at one point? They had a really big name attached to it as a director. Spielberg. No, it was... Um, Darren Aronofsky. It was someone like that. No, it was the guy who did... Uh, oh, I've just lost it because you said Darren Aronofsky and that's <laughs> yeah. all I can think of. Fight Club and whatever. Da Vinci was going to oh, do it. Oh, okay, right, 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 right. Yeah. The movie's nothing like the book because the book's like a report. It's like a military report yeah, about right, how the right. outbreak happened. But I think this was worth it in the end, especially mon- monetarily. I, I know it's not considered like a classic movie. Yeah, but except, do you remember the scene where he gets the Pepsi? He gets the Pepsi. Whatever. Name, also, another, name another thing that happens in that movie. Uh... The airplane bit. 
We have to get to the airplane because... Doesn't somebody get their arm cut off? Remember all the zombies are piling up over the wall? Sort of. Yeah, it's good. Nice. Yeah. I, th- I think it's fine. I think it's way better than most generic zombie things. Way be- I think it's a little bit better than most generic zombie things. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, so there you go. But at the same time, I just get a wave of generic zombie stuff. No, it's definitely that because they're all CGI zombies and whatever. Mm. I think the trailer of the pile of zombies really, uh, that really sold that movie. Remember that trailer? The zombies piling yes, up. Yes, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that a tr- is that a kind of an overused trope at this point? A big pile of zombies. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Mm. What's next? Small piles of zombies. Oh yeah, two nice. to three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> To fit in your like your, your small house, yeah, that's if you've right. You've got a got a small, you know, small house living. You know, I uh, my wife and I with my son, we went to a place today, and there was two acrobats in there in this restaurant, and one was standing on the. Wait, shop. wait, wait, wait! Slow down. It was just in a restaurant. It was like a regular restaurant. Where was the room for the acrobats? There was a tall roof. It was like a warehouse. Doesn't seem like a regular restaurant. It seems like a tall restaurant. But carry on. Anyway, there was a person on top was of it another a person. No, it wasn't. Okay, it was like standing on their shoulders, and they'll walk around being like, "Hello, everyone." And they said to my son, like, hello, little boy. And he's just like, I can't deal with this. Right. Like, he just like, hid <laughs> behind me. He's like, I can't <laughs> even comprehend what is happening here. Didn't want to bar it, Mason. Wow. And quite frankly, I wanted to push them over. Well, said, Get away from my son! <laughs> right? Well, if, you'd see, if he'd seen World War Z, he'd be well well up for it. No, you he know, would have right? seen a big pile, but not a small pile. That's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. What else, Mason? What about, have we talked about the Dick Tracy sequel? <laughs> yes, well, we have. We have. Which should we should we and go it, over? And here? it didn't come out. We did. We talked about it at the end of one episode. We, we did do it again. Yeah, Look, sure. um, and it didn't come out, Mason. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, whatever. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Oh, because it didn't come out. All right, we can still talk. Okay. Nah, There's no real rules, nah, Mason. Let's move, let's move to another. There's no real we'll rules. F- we'll figure out what episode that was when we talked about it. Okay. Basically, Warren Beatty acquired the rights, and he's always been like, "I'm going to make another one." And they owe like, me one. And they're like, "Yeah, exactly." It's been forty years. It's Warren been Beatty. forty years. You're 150 <laughs> years old, Warren Beatty. You made the first one. You were 110. <laughs> come on. That, yeah. that yellow coat has decayed at this yeah. point. You know, and it's it's too late. Exactly. So yeah. the interview. Uh, oh, speaking that, of North Korea, so being that's the, bad the guys, that is the Seth Rogen, James Franco, Evan Goldberg uh, yeah. movie, mm. uh, where they go and interview Kim Jong Un. Is that yeah. based on a real thing? Maybe, because I know there was a document. A documentary was made. Was it about, about Dennis Vo- Rodman visiting him? No, but there's a documentary made, I believe, about North Korea, where they were like every every time they went to film it, yeah, they were like, "We're going to review your footage." And delete everything that, we, yes. that does not appeal to us, you know, the government of North Korea. And apparently they, the, the documentary crew were aware of this and they, like, doubled up on, on like, memory sticks. Right, okay. So they would double record it and then they would, like, smuggle out the memory sticks. Oh, very good. Right? Pretty fast. smart, yeah. yeah. Very, very smart. It said they got the idea in the late 2000s of joking about what would happen if a journalist was, was required to assassinate a world leader. Uh-huh. And in March 2013, it was announced it wasn't really delayed. The only thing that happened with this was that they pushed it to a digital release because the North Koreans were threatening to bomb cinemas uh-huh. and, and attack the US off the back of this of this movie. Well, they didn't, did they? They didn't. Cowards, cowards. all of them. <laughs> all Every cowards. single one of them. A hundred percent. Yeah, who can't be listening to this because of various media restrictions. Mm. Uh, I think it's, it's got some good stuff in I it. I never saw it. It's I fine. Never saw it. Yeah. I mean, it kind of... It's not their best, but it's, I say, worth it, Mason. What do you oh, say? Oh, yeah, um... Well, having not seen it. Mm. It's probably on one of the seven streaming services. Oh, 100% it have. is. Yeah, let's say worth it. Why not? Okay, great. What about Deadpool, the original Deadpool? Yeah. So I've got a few notes on this. Please. It went in produ- production in the early 2000s with David S. Goya, um, yeah. who you may recognize from ruining a bunch of stuff. <laughs> but he also, and some good things. He did some Batman he's, stuff. He's one of those guys that skates through and you don't yeah. know... Uh, He's, he he takes the credit when it's good and he skirts the credit when it when it, he skirts the blame yeah, when it's bad. Exactly. There was a comic in the early two thousands that mentioned like that he's like Deadpool's a cross between Ryan Reynolds and a Sharp A at one point. Uh-huh, yeah. He was pushed into Wolverine as like a backdoor kind of pilot almost yeah, right, in a uh-huh, way. Uh-huh. Uh, and then off the back of that they were trying to Paul Wernick and Rhett Reese, I believe, were trying to make it for years and then it just didn't look like it was going to happen. And so Ryan Reynolds leaked the text test footage, though he'll never openly admit uh-huh. to that, though he has pretty much openly admitted to that. And then it eventually came out in 2016. Isn't that wild? Yeah. So yeah. it was maybe 15 years between when it's starting and when it came out. I was going to say Watchmen as well because we can do a few comic book ones. Yeah, right. We, well, we did a video on that for Caravan and Garbage. We talk about you know, like the 80s versions that was yeah. going to come from that. Do you think... So the the test footage, the Deadpool test mm. footage, when was that filmed, and then when was it it's released? It's not filmed; it's CGI. Oh, but when? Yeah. So when was it made? I think that was, was it released. Maybe two thousand 
11, 2012 it was made okay, and it was right. probably released in 2013. Okay. I'm guessing. Right. Well, that's, I mean, uh, you know, it's good then that it was a fairly recent, you know, CGI production. Yeah. Because any, anything prior to that could have been. It was also pretty low res as well, the version that came out. Yeah, right. And I don't think it really would have mattered. I think if it had been an animatic, it wouldn't have mattered. I think uh-huh. people would have seen but still been like, well, this captures the feel and whatever. And mm-hmm. This is what it should be. Yeah. So I don't think it really matters. As long as somebody's pointing at their balls. Yeah. And saying... Look at these. Look at my balls. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you think of that? <laughs> Speaking of David S. Goya, yes. he was the one who kicked off Venom in 1997. Oh my god. Yeah. So that was so that would have been that was pre everything. That was pre Spider Man. Pre Blade, even maybe. Yeah, right. Yeah. Wow. So interesting, that's interesting first choice. Yeah, I mean he seems like the kind of guy that you would get in the nineties to do Venom movie though. I meant interesting that it's Venom. No, Venom was huge though. I guess it's And true. Spawn. I know, but pre Spider Man, you know yeah. what I mean? But he was more Spawn than Spider-Man at that point. I guess that's, yeah. So I think that's probably, remember everything was crap and gritty or whatever. Yes, I do. There's not a good comic book movie in the 90s. I guess maybe the X-Men. Yeah, X-Men. Is there another one? Blade, Blade? technically. Blade Blade 1. Yeah, it's all right. It's good. Yeah, it's okay. If you release that now, you're not getting away with it. No, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe there is a good one. Is there, I know people will be like, what about Meteor Man or whatever? Very good, good jokes. But is there genuinely a good comic book, a great comic book movie from that era? Dick Tracy. Was that the early nineties or I is don't it eighty nine? No, it's just the only thing that's in my <laughs> head currently. I guess you could. Some people love Batman Returns. I would argue not great. Yeah. Or even good. I think. I think. I think Dick Tracy came out in nineteen ninety. Okay. Let me check. Okay. Just give up, Ron. Because it was post Batman. Yes, that was post totally Batman eighty nine, and they're like, we can just do another one. Yeah. So this is perfect. Kids will yeah. love Dick Tracy. June nineteen ninety. Yeah, and there was also The Shadow as well, yeah. which wasn't... We should watch that should for we? something. Yeah. yeah. All right. The knife attacks him. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> it's, a, it's a cranky little knife. It's a cranky little knife. Like, <laughs> I'm a knife. <laughs> I'm coming to get you. Which wouldn't be a problem if it was a regular knife, just to be clear. Yeah. It's a knife that can fly about. That's a major issue. Yeah, if it were anybody. a regular knife, mm. you just put it in your bottom drawer. Yeah. And every, sometimes it'd be like... Let me out, I'm going to get you. Like, I won't let you out, though, will I? Ah, oh, foiled again. <laughs> what if you need a What if you need a bin bag, though? Is All the bin bags are in here. Yeah, but you can't fly, so even if I open it, you're not going to... Oh, yeah, it's a really good point. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll make a mean face at you. I'll just flip, I'll flip your face side down. Oh, no. <laughs> Foil again. <laughs> would you hang on to that knife, or would you get Ooh. rid of it? Because I'd always worried it was going to come back. I want to know or where it is. Or would gain the ability to fly. Yeah. If it's magic. Yeah, I want to know where it is at all times. Because what if I'm just... Here's yeah. the thing. It would depend on whether it had a vendetta against me specifically. You think you could didn't. reason with it over time? I reckon if you... Because if it didn't, I'd like probably I'll, sell it to somebody else. Yeah. Out of sight, out of mind. I wouldn't yeah. even worry. A, couple, you know, a few weeks, I wouldn't even worry about it. <laughs> you wouldn't use it to, like, make money? Make I'd a YouTube video and be like, oh. do you got this fucking knife? You give me don't, some... don't forget to like and subscribe. It'd be like the annoying orange. I'm the but... annoying little knife. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and we could have him do a novelty single. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. It's the crazy frog, but it's a it's knife. And he's just like, I'm going to get you. The, the cranky knife. Get ya. The cranky knife. <laughs> <laughs> I can't fly, but I'll get you. I'll get you. Yeah. yeah you do a rap in the middle. Yes. A, yeah. It'd be good. Okay, uh, let's watch The Shadow. <laughs> okay. It's not going to live up to Cranky Knife, but... Definitely not. <laughs> um, you got another one? Uh, what about bloody... Um, what about Mad Max Fury Road? I've got so many notes on that. Because that's... That, I, mean, got, I was going to save okay, that to the end, right, but I can the, do it okay, now. What, okay, first note. When did Thunk Beyond Thunderdome come out? 86 or 85, I want to say. And then Mad Max Fury Road came out in... 2015. 2015. Yeah, okay, here we go. Let, I've... I've Came this is going to be a big finale. 85. Let's yeah, end with, I got let's another one for Let's end with a Maze Runner movie. <laughs> got that's, that's, idea, yeah. that's, that sounds. Uh, so. Real whimper. The idea for. I mean, we should have ended with Cranky Knife. Definitely. So he'd lost his passion for. George making, Miller. George Miller. For, uh-huh. He wasn't. I think someone associated with the movies died and he wasn't really happy with the third uh, one. I, and can't whatever. I can't remember the story specifically about it. We've talked about it, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, in 1995, George Miller got the rights back, and the idea came to him in 1998. So he set he was setting set to shoot this in 2001, but that was postponed because of September 11. Mm-hmm. The attacks, not the date. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gibson wasn't coming back at any of this point apparently. Melvin Gibson. Melvin Gibson was not doing it. Yeah. Uh, so then it was classic green. Melvin move, <laughs> isn't it? Just I don't want to be part of this franchise. I think I'm you could have. You could have easily put him in the new one. It would have mattered. I feel. 
Yeah, it's probably. Not, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't have wanted him in it. No, I think it, I think it's better with Tom Hardy. But I, as a as a real old grizzle, I, yes. Although would it? Have, I think it would have affected some of the action set pieces. Surely, he doesn't is, really do anything. I mean, I was everyone say, does a lot of ridiculous shit in that. But the, is there a yeah. lot of acrobatic? Because there's you know there's a scene set on the there's the you know there's a scene the set where the face. war boys are yeah. kind of driving through the desert and and there's a lot of jumping up and down on cars. But does he does Mad Max do a lot? Presumably in that? not. Yeah, he's mostly. Just I mean, he driving, does, right? but it's not him. It's Stunman. Yeah, no, I know yeah, that, yeah, but yeah. I mean, would you believe? I'm, I'm willing to I believe. I think I would. Okay. Yeah. I'm willing to believe a, a Tom Hardy, but not maybe a Gibson. Yeah, that's fair. That enough. being said, you know, it's the apocalypse. You do what you can. Also, if you're over sixty, you, you get need an that action toilet movie. paper. Oh, that I'm saying. If you're over sixty, you get an action movie. Everyone gets at least one. That's true. You got to get your taken. Yeah. So Gibson then, oh, I mentioned that wasn't coming back. So the film was greenlit uh, for May of 2013, but it rained, so they couldn't use it. Oh, in that's the, true. Yeah. The desert location. Was it filmed? This movie was, was not bo- filmed in Australia, no. but it was originally going to gonna be filmed yeah. in Australia. Heath Ledger was considered uh, to take on the role, but uh, it, his death obviously put a crimp in that. Yeah, it yeah, did. Put, a, a, real, put yeah. a real delay in there. So that was a rumour, though. In the March of two, uh, 2009, it was announced that an R-rated 3D animated film was in pre-production and would be taking uh, much of the plot from Fury Road, because it was always called Fury Road, uh-huh. or what the idea was behind it. Uh, it's always been at, at its core the same. Then, though, that was changed back to live action. Filming in Broken Hill was to begin in the early two, 2011. I remember that because that's when I started doing YouTube and I remember reporting on that it was delayed because it flooded again. Rain stopped playing. Yeah, again, yeah. And, and they, like flowers bloomed in the desert. Oh, yeah, right. And whatever. So then uh, it was pushed back. Uh, it, was, it filmed from June 2012 for 120 days with then reshoots in November in 2013 and then it was in, moved to Namibia. And then it was finally released in May of 2015. So that is 17 years from the idea. Yeah, we got right. it back in 2005, so it's 20 years, I guess. Yeah, right. From when he, from go to woe of yeah. that whole one. Well, I say worth it. 100%. And man. an astounding. It, it's a, the the idea fact that, that it's a, the, even like remotely good, let alone probably the best movie of that year or yeah, one right. of. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm. Is that the best movie? It's the best action movie of that oh, year. Oh, 100%. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I, know, like, I don't know what I said at the time, but 100%, sure. 100%, 100%, 100%. 100%. So there you go. Oh, that's right. I've got another good one I can probably end on. It doesn't have to be a Maze Runner. Do you want to do a Maze Runner one, though? No, I don't know the plot of the Maze Runner. You don't need to know the plot of the main run- Maze Runner. Maze Runner. Maze Runner. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. I hold, I I'm just being kn- bitten by a tiny I little just, knife. <laughs> I just need to know the number for the emergency services because <laughs> my friend James is having a stroke. Uh, so Dylan O'Brien, the star of the Maze Runner. I've seen the first one. It's all uh, right. Yeah. What's uh, in the maze? Why do um, they need to go in the maze? Uh, because they're trying to look for a way out of the maze. Okay. So they run the maze. Mm-hmm. And if you run the maze, yes. you gun the maze. That's not but, true. No. But they're trying to... So they there's kind not of, a minotaur in there. They map it every day. No, there's Speaking like... Speaking of minotaurs. There's like robots and whatever. Oh, okay. Uh, so Dylan O'Brien uh, fell from one vehicle into the path of another and he suffered a concussion, facial fractures, brain trauma. And the production on the film was eventually shut down. They are like, oh, he'll be back on his feet soon. But it was a serious and life-threatening and possibly damage his brain forever movie. Yeah, wow. But he did make a full recovery. So it was moved from... Uh, so Feb 2017 was when it was originally going to release to... Uh, got pushed to July of 2018, uh, which is... It's incredible that he survived that, let alone recovered yeah, the right. way that he did. So anyway, the death cure came out and... Mm. Worth it, I say. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, that movie none of us... The second seen. one was The Scorch. They're like, you'll never survive oh, The Scorch. Scorch Trials. Yeah, yeah right, I can't remember They that did, one. it turns yeah, out. Yeah. Just and he also survived falling in front of a car somehow. Yeah. It's incredible. Like the bloody falling in front of a car cure. <laughs> That's what they had. That's right. Medical professionals. Yeah. Well, I, th- I feel you want to talk about AI. I do want to talk about Maybe AI. Maybe we'll end on AI because I feel like... That's you, you. You bailed me up last week. You're like, I want to talk about AI. <laughs> it's a movie. Actually, I do. Actually, AI was the one I had to end with. Actually, to there be you fair, go. I, 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 I've got some other ones. If you want, uh, oh, yeah, just judge. quickly, Fast and Furious Seven of Death of Paul Walker. Yeah, Death of Paul Walker. Uh, summer of 2014. I was going to segue from car crash into this, but I'm like, that's tasteless, isn't it? Sure, now yeah. I'm doing this. So what's this even? I don't know. Anyway, so summer 2014. You've really brought attention to it <laughs> yeah, now. I know. Summer 2014 to April of 2015. So after Paul Walker's death, obviously they'd filmed some of it mm-hmm. and then they had to rewrite it around his character leaving the franchise and also action sequences where they replace him with his brother and digital doubles and old footage. And again, that movie is incredible that it's, it's one of the better ones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Agreed. And revitalize the franchise, yeah. in my opinion. Well, the one before, I feel like, revitalized it. Well, in I my disagree. Opinion. I feel that was just. Wait, was that five or six, the one before? No, that was seven. 
It was six. Five was with The Rock. Yes. But what was six? I don't know. Doesn't matter, no, does no it? No idea. Yeah. No memory of it. Did you know Jurassic World, though, has been uh, was in production since 2001? Not surprising. We should have checked it out at jurassicworld.park.org or whatever that website <laughs> was, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, Joe Johnston. It's just a series of blog posts. That guy going, I'm slowly losing hope. <laughs> there'll ever be a sequel. <laughs> Perhaps quite similar to the original. Maybe Chris Pratt will be in it, but I don't know. I don't know who he is at this point. Just <laughs> dark darkness is closing in. <laughs> I hope the female lead wears sensible shoes the whole time. <laughs> You're doing a really good vibe as well on a keyboard. I'm slowly sliding yeah. off the keyboard, <laughs> yeah. falling under the desk. So Joe Johnston, who did the third one, didn't want to return. Oh. I didn't know this, but Sam Neill, uh, Alan Grant, he who'd been in number three, mm-hmm. he was contracted. Which is a bit number two. That's right. Which is what's all right? Yeah, it's, a bit yeah, it's all right. It's no, fine. I seen it. uh, and he, even though he was contracted for three more films, uh-huh. he was publicly saying that he couldn't imagine a way for his character to be involved in another film, even okay. though he signed up right. to three films. Uh-huh. Which he I just love. signed it and then he's like, Hang on a second, and they're like, "Too late!" And they snap the briefcase closed, and they left. And like you're in, you're on the hook. But, but he hasn't done three more. No, but he's in the next one. But is he still contracted somehow? No, that, would, that just... would have lapsed. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, they were probably like, "You'll never get another role. You're going to be a pig farmer in New Zealand forever." And he's like, "That's Fine. what I want." <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so the fourth Jurassic Park film, at one point, this is from Wikipedia. I should point yeah. out. Uh, was going to be the last in the series and it would have ignored the events uh, of the previous film. Really? Which I don't think really matters. No. I don't think you could Because most viewers ignore the previous yeah, film. It's of anything. fine. I think it's fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was reported the story would partially involve dinosaurs migrating to uh, the Costa Rica uh, mainland mm-hmm. and a team of experts, including Alan Grant and Malcolm, would chart an expedition to an offshore island and discover the dinosaurs breeding freely. Which I think is also the plot of the first movie. A lot of <laughs> yeah. But do you think they're going to be charting expeditions in the new one? Because that makes sense. Like they're like we're loving dinosaurs in the real world. We're keeping an eye on this. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. And that's Hollywood, isn't it? It's just recycling an old. Yeah. Recycling old concepts. Exactly. Kira Knightley was supposed to be in it as a dinosaur. Uh, yeah. And I've just the there was also I, you know there was that human hybrid thing. I think yeah, that might a, yeah. not actually be an actual thing. Oh, do you there's, think that was just wishful thinking? Conflicting ideas about where that came from. Well, as far as I'm concerned, there's only one hybrid theory, and that's from Linkin Park. Yeah. Mm. Crawling <laughs> in my skin. These wounds. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Uh-huh. So, and then I've just written here, a bunch of shit was, uh, happened, and it was supposed to come out in 2005, uh, back and forth, et cetera, and so forth. Michael Crichton died. That kind of put a yeah. damper on the whole thing because uh-huh. uh, people, people took that as a sign. And then in about 2011, 2012, they went, Hey, there's money in this. We should make it. Oh, yeah. And they did, and it made and a Michael billion Crane's dollars. And Michael not here to stop us. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it made a billion dollars. It was a huge, huge hit. I've heard of Jurassic World. Yeah, me too. Mm. And um, you know why it was such a massive hit? Mm. Because it was of equal quality to every other <laughs> Jurassic movie. Even the ones you haven't seen? Correct. Or especially those ones. Yep. and all its subsequent movies. Yes. And the short film <laughs> and whatever's coming out next. And the ride, probably. And the ride, probably. And the video games. Probably, some of them, yeah. yeah. Uh, do you have any more? I, I can do AI. Let's talk about AI. Anyone, anyone, you You've talk written here particular? phone booth. Oh, yeah. I do have that. How it's long, how long is that? It's not a fun in? one. Oh, this, no. I, this is, um, Did somebody die? I was just going to talk about World War II, but the movie's kind of still... World War II? Well, just the... because The concept of World War II. Movies, that was delayed. Things were delayed and movies oh, okay. delayed and they postponed the Oscars or whatever, but they just kept making movies I thought you were, I thought you were knowing. I thought you knew something about World War II being delayed. <laughs> oh, look, I don't want to talk about all the things that I know about World War II, Mason. I was going to say something. I'll tell you off air because it, it, sound, it sounds really sketchy about. <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> yeah, about was, someone I know related to. We'll talk about it after. Oh my yeah. god! <laughs> it's it's actually wow. not sketchy. Okay, but it sounds sketchy. Okay, mm. I thought you were going to say that the bombing of Pearl Harbor was stuck in development hell. <laughs> oh, very good. I wish the movie was. Am I right? <laughs> yes. That's one that we've already talked about, so we never have to we'll talk about it again. Never have to talk about it again, nor will we. So Phone Booth was delayed from 2002 to 2003 because I don't know if you remember at the time, Phone Booth is based around a man who goes into a phone booth and a sniper pins him down there. Yeah. And he's like... I remember being good. And he's like, tell your wife you're cheating on her or whatever. Is that the, okay. Yeah. And he's <laughs> like, I won't do it, Kiefer Sutherland. And... Uh, <laughs> And then he and, does. And, and then Keith was something like, how do you know this is me? And he's like, well, you've got a very recognisable voice. 24, you've got that resurgence going on at the moment. Yeah, I sure, sure do, boys. and yeah. I'm springboarding back into movies. I'm Kiefer Sutherland. Then why are you doing this? 
don't know. I don't know. Got the summer off. Yeah. Oh, because there was a sniper. <laughs> there was a real in, life a sniper, sniper incident attack in, in DC. Maybe? Killed like eleven people. Yeah, like I a, that. a pair of dudes did that. So yeah, I remember that. They delayed it until they caught those people. Good call. So not a fun story, but no. just a factual thing. Also, this isn't everything that was delayed, by the way. No. I'm sure we'll get some that are like, I can't believe you didn't talk about it. But why don't you email us your favorite? Yeah, we'll, thing that was delayed. And we'll read it. We'll do a special episode just for you. We'll, we'll email to if you. If you have. If you have one that was delayed for many years and you were bang up, you were super looking forward to it, and mm. then it came out and you were crushingly disappointed, let us know. I'd say people would say that about a lot of Star Wars stuff or yeah. Indiana Jones or... Dude, you can forever. We could talk about Indiana Jones, though, because that's one that was... It was, it was supposed to be... The rumours are like Kevin Costner was going to play his evil brother in the 90s, and I don't know whether any of that was real. And Really? The story was... Why, why did he never get a mention? I can't remember. It might, it might have been just a rumour <laughs> that I read in the 90s. I remember reading that in, like, 98. Or oh, something. I'd be bang up for Evil Brother. Yeah, we would. What, uh, do you, what do you think the role would, what do you think the Evil Brother, like what character archetype would the Evil Brother be? Would it be Confl- like, a, like a character who hates archaeology? Archaeolo- no, he, he's, he's an evil, just an evil archaeologist. Okay, right. Which is also what Indiana Jones is doing. I mean, in many ways, he is an evil archaeologist. But it's interesting, he's I, read, an amoral I read an article on Up- Uproxx this week about Temple of Doom, how it's a prequel. And how it makes sense that he sucks in that movie because he hasn't learnt anything. Because if you watch the chronologically those movies, yes. he actually gets better right, yeah. as a human being. Mm-hmm. And I find that really interesting. Yeah. But they also talked about the reason in this article that didn't happen in the 90s is because Spielberg, Lucas and Harrison Ford all had to be on board for the same ideas. And Lucas was oh, just... Oh, it's like a three, three-man three voting yes. system. Okay. And and Lucas just wanted to do Aliens, and the other two were like, we don't want that. Yeah, right. So it just kind of didn't happen for Failmate, 20 right. years. Yeah, right. And then it did, and, you know. Yeah. The, the other two were like, we want Kevin Costner as the evil brother. <laughs> but he'd have to be something, I feel like. Again, it's probably not even true. No, I know, but I'm just. I read it in a magazine in the 90s. If you, want, if you, if you have an idea of what Kevin Costner's character could have been, because I feel he should have to be, maybe he's like a. Aristocrat. But a Nazi? No. The Rocketeer. I maybe he's a guy that keeps taking Indiana Jones artifacts that he steals and giving them back to the cultures he's stolen them from. Like that's, that's his. So he's a good guy. He's a good guy, <laughs> and then he's beaten to death at the end. Indiana Jones drops a big rock on him, <laughs> and he takes the idol or whatever out of his dead hand, and he. Steals it again. Yeah, he shows his dad, and his dad's like, good, "Pretty good, <laughs> good work. You're the best brother. <laughs> I only have one son again." That's right. You may have been named after the dog, but your brother was named after a big pile of poo. <laughs> That's right. A real rat. <laughs> a rat that lived in a pile of poo outside our house. <laughs> yeah. The dumbest thing I've ever seen. No, it's not. It's not even close. <laughs> AI. And his name's literally <laughs> Rattus Jones. It's his legal name is Rattus Jones because his dad had an inkling. He did. Yeah. Something wrong with that dad. No yeah. wonder Indiana Jones turned out like that. Yes. Are you kidding me? Also, he fell into snakes. He fought a lion. Yeah. Shit is insane. It's not good. Yeah. It's a wonder he's anything at all as a human yeah. being. Mm-hmm. Shit, oh, he's a monster. Mm. Anyway, AI. Oh, yeah. So uh, artificial intelligence. It eventually, I know what it stands for. I know, but some people would know. It's it's the Haley Joel Osment movie. It came out in like two thousand and one. Mm-hmm. So Kubrick be, 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 pff, Kubrick began developing uh, Stanley Kubrick. S- yes, sorry. Mm-hmm. Uh, Super Toys Last All Summer, which is the is book that, a that it's based Dick on. Novel. I don't think it is. Uh, in the you can look it up. Yeah, I'm going to look in it up. late nineteen seventies. Okay. Uh, he asked Spielberg to direct this movie in nineteen eighty five. So that far so ahead. So Kubrick of him. asked. Yes. So the Kubrick f- director himself was like, I don't think I can do this. Yeah, he wanted. He thought Spielberg would have been a better choice. Uh, writers were hired and... <laughs> sorry to see where they write. Writers were hired and... <laughs> he was a man, but he's like a rat. <laughs> yes. Writers were hired and fired over like the next six years. Kubrick dropped AI to work on a film uh, adaptation of Wartime Lies. Never and heard he, of it. And he felt also that computer animation was not advanced enough to create David because... One of the things David that, being Ellie Joel Osment's character. Yes, because one of the things I'm uh, this wasn't in the stuff that I read, but one of the things that was a problem with that movie was he wanted to film it over such a long period of time, which he does all of his movies yes. generally, that a kid would age out of that noticeably. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So he was looking for ways around that. So uh, after Jurassic Park came out, it was announced the production was announced in. Do you find that book? 
Oh, it's by Brian Aldist. Okay. He's written so many science fiction. Oh, my ones, God. So good, good Even on, this one we're talking yeah, about. Good on him. So after Jurassic Park came out, and I feel like this happened a lot, then he realised that it, was, it could be done to an extent. Yeah, right. And so he announced production in 1994, but Kubrick was happy. I was unhappy with the cost of ILM and the two people who worked on Jurassic Park, the special effects for that, for this. He thought it was too co- uh, too costly, but that, like, that shit is expensive. Like, it's, yeah. It's, ex- it's expensive And also for they're, giving you, they're giving you the money to make this. Yeah, exactly. So... So you know, I don't. I don't know what. I don't. I don't, I don't feel it's good enough to, that they charging me so much money for this movie that I really want to make. Yeah, and I think it's it. going to be good. So he assembled a series of. Uh, so what he didn't, a team assembled a series of little robot type humans for the David character instead. Uh, the quote is: "We tried to construct a little boy with a movable rubber face to see whether we could make it look appealing." Uh-huh. Said pro- producer Jan Harlan, but she reflected, "It was a total failure. It looked awful." Because, no. I mean, a rubber little yeah, boy rubber face, boy, no yeah. one wants that, do they? <laughs> no. It's horrifying. Uh, anyway, Sp- he wanted Spielberg to do it still, but he's like, I don't want to do this. Anyway, Kubrick died and then Spielberg made it. And that's essentially what happens. Like right. in the, uh, after Eyes Wide Shut, it was his last film, he yeah, died right. and then we got it. And from memory, it's fine. Yes. Is it good, maybe? So, so, the, so the, the sticking point was Kubrick going, please don't make this movie. And then he died, and then Spielberg was like, "Well, that's the last roadblock out of the way." No, no, he wanted Spielberg to do oh, it. Oh, he did. Okay, right, right. And right. Spielberg didn't want to make it. Oh, okay, right. He's like, "This is more, you know, you like kids and aliens and fun and shit. You should make this." <laughs> right, and right, right. Like, I don't. Okay. Know, you make it. So does Spielberg I'm, just like you fucking make it if you love this movie so yeah. much. You've been talking to me about this for twenty years. God damn, I've been, made so many movies. <laughs> I'm sick of making movies. I'm not making movies on spec for randos. <laughs> not even you, Kubrick. <laughs> Like Kubrick, yeah, got him. Nice, and then he died from that. <laughs> he died of a mortal insult. So the, it's, has Spielberg, I wonder, spoken about that. You don't have to have the answer there, but I, wonder I don't. If, no. I wonder if he's he did at the time. I remember. Did, and did, was he like, well, I'm doing this because Kubrick asked me. I think it was part it. of it, yeah. and I called him Kubrick, and that's what killed him. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, uh, so I feel a little bit bad about that. About the Kubrick thing? No, that's what Spielberg oh, said. Oh, okay. You're yeah. okay with the Kubrick joke? Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm okay with it. <laughs> So, yeah. There's been enough time. There's been plenty of time. Mm. Yeah. So, look, you probably get a poo covered in, brick covered in poo coming through your window if anybody objects to that, I'd imagine. It's true. But I I should watch that again. I mentioned this last week, but I think there are some good ideas in it. And apparently also the Jude Law character is a a gigolo character in that, but apparently he was going to be like a G.I. Joe type army character. A G.I. gigolo. Yeah. Not the gigolo part, just Uh the army part. Yeah, right. Like a a robot army man. Yeah. But Kubrick changed it to that and he was like, well, we lost our bloody PG rating or whatever. Ha ha ha. He said to himself, (laughs) why is this movie so expensive? (laughs) Why won't anybody pay for this R-rated movie with a robot gigolo? (laughs) Ha (laughs) ha ha. Yeah. Who am I even talking to here? (laughs) (laughs) Ha 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 I don't think, I think it was PG-13. Yeah. Great cast. Yeah. You know, I watched the other day. What's that? Bedazzled. Was it, was it the movie Gus? <laughs> I mean, we got to do our time on Gus. We today, do time on Gus. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the movie. So the the Brendan Fraser yeah. Elizabeth Hurley movie. It's funny, man. She's the devil. Yeah. There's some. I mean, it's not brilliant, but there's uh-huh. some sequences in that yeah, which right. are quite. There's a bit where it's like a ten minute sequence where Brendan Fraser just speaks Spanish for the entire okay, thing. Okay, right. It's quite good. Yeah. Probably learned Spanish for seven months for that. No doubt. But they made it. That's the difference. So they did make it. It's yeah. true. And it's a remake, I think. Uh, yeah. Peter Sellers probably Peter Sellers. No, it was. Yeah, it was um, was it Dudley Moore? I did know. I looked it up and uh-huh. I can't remember now. Uh-huh. But somebody was in it. Yeah, that's, that's cool. right. Yeah. Anyway, those are all the movies that have ever been delayed but also came out. That's correct, yes. Uh, I wonder if New Mutants will come out. They yeah, have to. no, it's got to. It's on, the, it's on the slate, right? So was Bond. Oh, but then coronavirus. That's what I'm Didn't saying. Factor that in. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're but I think they're right. at the point where it's just like, we're, this is happening. We're, yeah, doing, right. we're getting rid of it. It's yeah. like that Doom video. I just wanted to get rid of it. It's like going to the toilet. Yeah. Eventually it's too late. You know? Get rid of it. That's, yeah. Yeah. We're reached the point of no return. That's right. I don't care if there's no toilet paper, the New Mutants is coming out. Uh, agreed. Mm. Um, so I'm trying to think of any of them. Did we say the rest of these, whether they were Blurthon or not? Doesn't matter, does it? No, that's right. Uh, okay, you know what it's time for? <laughs> no, what, you know what? It isn't all right, James. You came up, you worked hard, you You're workshopped right. this. Have you seen AI? Maybe not the whole thing. I think it's Blurthon, I think. Do you Maze think Runner? it's Blurthon? No, the other one. Worth, worth it. it. Okay, these all seem like they're worth Ways it. Ways Runner worth it. Uh, Mad Max, obviously worth it. Fury 7, worth it. Uh, Jurassic World, yeah, I guess it's worth it. Venom, <laughs> nah. Um, Deadpool, you, worth it. You came up with a system and I respect it. Yeah. Workshopped Fo- it with your wife and friends. That's right. And phone booth, worth it, I would say. Mm, I think so too. Anyway, if you think some of these aren't worth it or blurth it, let us know. Or yeah. don't. Just continue on with what you're doing.
That's cool too. You know, it's time for Mason. Uh, is it time for what we read? Yeah, what we're we gonna read. We're gonna read. I'm doing the thing. What are we reading today? <laughs> I just realized I forgot, I forgot to put the uh, the reason I talked about bedazzled. Yes. Is because the lead in AI, the mum. Yes. Is played by um, Francis O'Connor, who's in Bedazzled. And that's why ah, I said that. And, and in Three Billboards. Yes. and is, No, Francis O'Connor. Sorry. Oh, no, Francis McDormand. Okay, right. Yeah, sorry. I said the wrong thing. But now I've said the right thing. No. You, so you weren't just watching it because you were going through a Brendan I think phrase, I was. I think a part of me was like, because we just... The phrase naissance. But the phrase naissance, because we just wrapped up the mummy. And mm. I like that era of Brendan Fraser. Like, I remember thinking... Um, Last from the past had some okay oh, moments. Yeah. George of the Jungle. I only saw like a couple of years ago. That's Have you seen Gods and Monsters? No, apparently it's so good. You should say I've seen that. It's really yeah. good. It's, it's uh, Fraser and Ian McKellen. Mm. Good movie. I mean, he's not fighting any mummies, but. Oh, well, then no. I'm obviously not going to watch right. them. What are you even talking oh, sorry. about? Sorry. What are you even talking about? Sorry. What are you reading, Mason? Well, I'm not reading anything, but. <laughs> a classic week, nerd. Right? This or not? W- well, <laughs> yeah, but this week I've, I'm, I'm continuing my quest to play all the video games that are not current. And I started on God of War. And it's good, isn't it? Just there's a lot more environment, environmental based puzzles than I than I thought there would be. There is a lot of there's that a lot of moving blocks and, and yeah. shooting arrows at, at light bulbs and stuff. Yeah, sure. Mm. Do you like that there's a hub world in it, or do you wish it just went on? Because oh. what I liked about the old God of Wars, yeah, one, yep. two, and three, and also there was a prequel. Because I never played any of them. I've never played any of the previous mm. ones. Is that they? You never kind of circled back to anything. You might yeah, right. touch on things, but. I don't really like generally hub worlds in games. I like mo- I like moving through it. And not yeah, right. And adve- yeah, it feels it feels more fetch questy than I thought. It's it thought would of traversal be. and being sitting on the boat yeah. with the sun. Yeah, um, looks good though. eh? It does look, look yeah. so good. Oh my god, the where the witch lives is just a, mm. there's a. There's a witch who lives in a sort of a secret woods, and it's very very exciting. Yeah, yeah very springtime. Have you met like the blacksmith dudes and the whatever? Yes, I have. Yeah, yeah. cool. Have you met the big serpent? Yes. Cool. You met various villains. I've met the guy whose head you chop off and then you carry it around. It's pretty good. I don't even remember that. There's a guy trapped in a tree. Spoilers for a move, a game that came out two years ago. Oh, but yeah. There's like a god trapped in a tree, and you and you need <laughs> yeah. you need his knowledge to, with you, but yeah. he's stuck in the tree, so you, you chop big, his head off. What a big dragon! Yes, cool. Yeah. You know, you're fair, fair way in. Okay. I, the reason I was confused then because there's a, I think it's in God of War two, yeah. or it might be three. Where you also cut a guy's head off and <laughs> carry it around. Well, you know it works. It's the god. Of, it's the light guy. Might be her- Hermes. No, which is the light god, the Greek god, whatever. Anyway, you use it as like a beacon. Yeah, in the right. Uh-huh. Of the game. You just got a seven yeah. head on you, uh-huh. but it doesn't talk. It just mm. screams light. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. The characterization I think I enjoy in that. Does he line up. A, he lines up a little bit. I feel. Yeah. Yeah. But no. Uh-huh. But yes, a little yeah. bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. Good I also like that he's in the wrong era. Like he's not even supposed to be there. Oh, he's not even supposed to be in that that mythos, really. Because yeah. this is because okay, so he's in the previous God of War games. He mm. fights every mythology, right? Sometimes he uh, fights. Just, just most of the Greeks. Okay, right. Yeah. <laughs> Does he not fight the Norse gods before? I feel like there's nah. okay, right? I feel like there's there's. I I get the impression he's fought like Thor before. Maybe you might be right. Okay. Well, he, oh, no, I'm gonna spoil the game. Okay. But, um, Don't spoil it then. You, yeah, you find out some stuff. Nice. About the history of and pretty sick, so on and so forth. Yeah, yeah. Nice, okay. And who certain people are. Oh. I mean, he's him. There's no revelation. He's there. just a guy. He's, he's the son of Zeus, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, which was revealed in two, okay. or a different one. Mm. Anyway, it's a good game. It is a real good game. Um, and they're probably working on another one. I imagine. Oh, yeah. uh, what else do I think about this game? This game. <laughs> what's what's another hot take from this game from 2018? Combat's good. It's pretty unforgiving. You know. Okay. Here's another thing that that. Uh, I found a little bit unwieldy is I feel like the attack buttons are not in the place they should be. You could probably remember the that. Or I don't want to though. If you go into the menu, would it? No, I don't want to though. Cool. I'm just gonna be. I'm just gonna bitch about it. Yeah, that's good. While, too. I, while I'm going like right trigger, why it's attack on the right triggers? Yes. How dare they? Are you Are you worried that these kids gonna get murdered because he's got a sec? It's his second family. Oh. Uh, no, not really. Not especially. Well, you should, Mason. Oh no, because he's known for it. Oh, is no, no spoilers. Okay, right. Yes, that's a, he literally murdered his. Wife and child. He murdered his own wife and child. Yes. He murdered his own wife and child. In the first game, you find out that out, yeah. Kratos did. Yes. Why? Because the God of War, the original one, yes. a different dude with big spider legs on his back or something. Okay. He's He makes you run into a hut and, like, murder everybody. Uh-huh. You don't do it. It's in a cut scene. Okay. And you... And be, 
Is it an illusion? No, I can't remember. But okay. basically he murders his own family. Oh, no. And then he's like, what have I done? And he's like, I did this so you'd be a better god of war. And he's like, fuck you. What are you, what yeah, are you doing? Right. But mm. also, maybe look around before you start murdering <laughs> right? people. Yeah. But he's not the god of war initially. Because the first game you have to kill the god of war. Right, yes. And then you become, become the god, god of war. war. Okay, yeah. Anyway, spoiler alert for that game from 2004 or whatever okay. it came out. Yeah. Great stuff. It is great stuff. What have you been reading? Also, the PSP ones are good too. Oh. Surprisingly. Not surprisingly. They're just good. Uh, uh, There's a comic called Billionaire Island by Mark Russell, who did Second Coming, and Steve Pugh, who uh, worked on Harley Quinn Breaking Glass. And what's all this about? Uh, It's a billionaire island where billionaires are like controlling everything, and this one guy's like, I'm going to get on that island and kill everybody. Just the billionaires. Yeah. It's like a billionaire home away from home. Yes, but it's also people specifically. You find out why he wants to do it, and it's been one issue in, and it's independently published, and I like it. Oh. But I also... Is yeah. it inspired by current events? Probably. Okay. Isn't that all things, Mason? <laughs> it's probably... New ins- media, you know what I mean? I do know precisely what you mean. Not that you know anything about current events with your old-ass video game you're playing. <laughs> yep. What old... People people out there, the listeners, the wonderful weekly wacker to do's. Last of Us. Play Last mm. of Us. I've okay. got it. I can give it to you. I feel like I should play some games that aren't like mm. third-person wandering around a hub world situation. It's not, uh, there's no hub world in okay, right. You move forward. Okay. See some cool stuff. All right. Mm. You should play it. Okay, well, or don't. don't. I'm going to. Yeah, you don't have to though. Okay. Yeah. All but right. no, you want people to say what for you to play. Yes. Yeah, okay. I'll play it for the listeners. Yeah, good. And I'll tell them about it. A game they've already played. <laughs> <laughs> I'll explain it to them back badly. People they'll, love They'll that. like it. They'll really enjoy it. I also, uh, in anticipation for the the remake and of The Last Airbender uh, mm. uh, because they're doing a live action version. Uh-huh. I want to watch that show, so I've been watching it through. I'm like five in. It's cool. I like it a lot. All right. uh, the only thing is it's it's like it's got the big black lines down the side. Oh, because it's, it's a 4-3. Yeah, because yeah, okay, right. it started in like the early 2000s or whatever, mid 2000s. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you it's can like, just move your head slightly forward. I don't want that. Okay. And, but it's also the team behind... Voltron, he did the recent Voltron. Oh, and you can kind of see the similarities in uh-huh. it, which is interesting. But because I do want to do the movie for Caravan and Garbage, the bad movie, so I feel like I need to understand the series before I go into that. Okay, right. So that's really So you could be the expert. It. Exactly. So mm. I can be an expert for once in my life. But it's genuinely great. Like, there's an obvious reason why people love it, because it's really good. Okay. So all right, yeah. maybe I'll watch an episode. It's all on Netflix. Well. Check it out. All right, and then I want to watch the sequel as well. The Legend of Korra. Yeah. Sick, right? Pretty, pretty sick. sick, bro. Pretty sick, bro. Anything else? I think that's about the lot. That sick, I'm, that's sick, bro. That's pretty sick. Man. Yeah. I listened to Mark, my Michael Rosenbaum's podcast. What, Did you listen to one with Brandon Routh? I listened to the episode with Brandon Routh and then I listened to an episode with Tom Welling, so I'm like, just just listen the to Superman, Superman episodes, yeah. Yeah. Are you going to listen to the Henry Cavill one? I don't know. There was one. There's not. Oh, you son of a bitch. It's good to be here. Uh-huh. Yeah, does, so he, I heard he talks a bit about Brian Singer in that. I haven't got up to that point. And he's yet. like, he wasn't very nice to some people. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it turns out. It's I feel correct. like I don't know. I feel because I only watch, I only listen to a couple of episodes. Uh, I feel like Michael Rosenbaum. Like I think his 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 conversation with Brendan Routh was a little bit stilted, just because I don't think they knew each other before. Oh, okay, this. right. But the one with Tom Welling was super fun. Yeah. They're kind of so hang out all the time. It's a high yeah, five. They're, they're cool. They're cool. Yeah. Fun dudes. And, and they, they both time. dated Lana Lang or something in that show or whatever happened uh-huh. to that show. <laughs> right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's a good. Yeah, I've been meaning. I've only oh. ever seen clips, but I should actually uh-huh. listen to that. And give it a proper listen. He's a little bit Joe Rogany, I think, because he's bald, or he's not bald. He's not bald. Yeah, because yeah. of DMT. Almost certainly because of DMT. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, because what happens is when you take DMT, it, it puts you on a plane of existence where you are Joe Rogan. We're all <laughs> Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan is peak Joe Rogan. That's oh my God. that's the, that's peak humanity. Before what happens is you're regular human. Yep. And then you evolve to pure energy. But in between, you Joe Rogan. I would have thought that Joe Rogan would become after the pure energy. Oh, right, yeah. Maybe you circle back. That's pure back. protein. <laughs> oh, right, okay. That's what that is, yeah. Great, terrific. Should we do some letters? Yeah, I think we should. Do letters. The classic one was letters, oh letters, we love We can keep it, mate. Letters, they're only a take away. We're going to hear right now, we're going to do letters. Got a lot of rhythm in the app today. Yeah, that's right. Form a drum circle. Let's go. Let's go, everyone. So this is from Jay. Oh, if you, do, if you want to reach the show, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod on Twitter. Uh, send them out. Please do. You're probably more likely to get in if you do it during the week because then I do it at the, before the show and I get inundated and then I, I can't pick everything. Mm, if I see it during true. the week and I like the question, I'll, and if I'm on something that I can 
quickly copy it, I'll do that. Anyway, this is from Jamie during the week, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Uh, what's your favourite Indiana Jones film and why? I was just thinking about this week. No, you can think about it on there. I won't. We'll, make it, we'll monetize this content. Oh, okay, cool. I'll put an ad right here. <laughs> nice, nice. For what, though? I don't know. Protein? Yes. Protein powder. Pure protein. Okay, great. 100%, bro. Nice. Oh, yeah. You've got to stop saying 100%. Like I said, too much. No, it's got to be your catchphrase. You're right. It's my yeah. catchphrase alone. It's right. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's a, for me, it's a toss-up between... Um, first and the third, right? First and the third, exactly. What about you? Yeah, yeah so, either same. Raiders, so either Raiders or Last Crusade. I think it's three yes. because I really like the dynamic. I of, think of, it, of Henry but I also Jones like and the, Henry Jones Jr. The Marion Ravenwood dynamic from the first one. Right. It's hard to go past that truck stunt. He's sliding underneath and the big yeah. rock, obviously. But the dynamic in the third one and that tank battle yeah. is insane. And I yeah. love it. Yeah. Okay, it's it's just on the cusp of being too big for that kind of pulp yeah. movie where it's like, okay, well they they, you know, there there was nothing on the level of this kind of stunt in an actual nineteen mm. thirties pulp film or whatever. Yeah. But you know, it's really God damn. Good films. What about you though? Which one? And I like Temple of Doom also, yeah. even though I know that like yeah, no, it's, yeah. Uh, I feel like Raiders kind of gets a little bogged down. Yeah, at certain points, there's some. Well, it's like early eighties, and yeah, you know. and there's some, you know, some some moving some stuff around to discover some clues and, and find the location of the ark or what have you. And I think it, it kind of loses some momentum there. Okay. Whereas I feel like this, the third one is better at keeping the momentum, even though they're just like, what do I? What what hole do I punch through or whatever? You know, yeah. <laughs> you know that famous hey, dialogue. Well, yeah. Hey, Dad, what what all do I punch through? Or you know the <laughs> bit in the in the sewers where they're just rubbing the stencil yeah. over a, over a grave or whatever. I'm like, yeah. well, let's you know you it was action packed all the way up to this point and then action packed all the way out. So does Raiders open with an action scene? It does. Yeah, he's in the temple. It's got yeah. an incredible opening. Yeah, yeah. Blood guns. There's also more sand. Dr- there's also more drinking in the first one. They kill a monkey with some dates. Uh, he yeah. bites a guy in front of a. Propeller, whatever. That, that pub burns down. Marion's pub, pub burns, burns down. down. Yeah. It's a good movie. Yes. It's the reason why people like that good movie. And it's the third one then, right? It's the third one, yeah. Okay, cool. 100%. What have you got from... Uh, that's my catchphrase, excuse you. <laughs> what uh, is it? You said 100%. Yeah. You're not allowed to say that. I'll never do it again. <laughs> <laughs> so, did I say Weekly Planet Pod? 10 out of 10, <laughs> baby. <laughs> that's very good. Uh, Weekly Planet Pod at gmail.com. That's right. Um, what have you got for this us? Is this is from Brian. Week? Hello, this Ryan. Huge fan of Brian. Podcast. Brian Thank you, Brian. Brian, Brian with a Y. Brian, Brian okay. with a Y. So, Brian. I'm from the north of Scotland and wondered what are your, f- your favourite British TV comedies are and if there are any that are considered classics in the UK but maybe the humour doesn't translate so well over with you guys. Every British comedy translates here because we're basically... Yeah, a, we get we get kind of the best of the both worlds. Yeah. We get a lot of British stuff. We got more British stuff in the 80s and 90s and then it kind of shifted to American Probably more yeah. American now. Than yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Do you remember the British Empire? Which was that one? The British Empire was. This. It what was Chris Barry from Red Dwarf, except he's a really oh. uptight, like leisure centre manager. Yeah, I loved that. Yeah, it was a good. It was a good Didn't show. Didn't he die and then he got kicked out of heaven at one point? I don't remember that, but probably. Yeah. yeah. Look, UK. I mean, there's so many classics. Uh, the you know Monty Python's Flying Circus, obviously. Yeah. Uh, and um. Some mothers do have them, obviously. Crap. Yeah, just kidding about that one. I don't like any of that stuff. Yeah, any right. That. Ooh, any ooh, a... anything where anybody would say "ooh, matron." Yeah, right out, right in the bin. So oh, none of that. You. No, no, are you being served? There were seven series of the British Empire. I didn't oh, know that. There you go. The young ones, certainly. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Went from ninety-one to ninety-seven. I had no idea. Um, yeah, I uh, the office. Uh, I don't love extras in hindsight. Okay. You know, it's yeah. just like Daniel Radcliffe's got a condom yeah, yeah. or whatever. It's like, yeah, good, <laughs> yeah, great stuff. Still funny though. Still hilarious. The Mighty Boosh. Yeah, I like the Mighty I think we've talked about this before. The, yeah, the yeah. third season is not great. Yeah. How do you feel about Father Ted? I, never, I didn't really watch it that much. Okay, yeah. I know it's. I know that guy's like being a dickhead or whatever. Uh-huh. But it's all, it's all right. You know, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to look up a British comedies yeah. and I'm just going to list them and we're going to go, ooh, good or not good. Sounds good to me. <laughs> okay. Do you have another letter in the meantime? Faulty Towers. Faulty Towers. Yeah, I saw a Faulty Towers play in Australia. They did a they did a stage show. Not the uh, not the dinner tour or whatever it is. No, no, this was oh, like okay. They and I thought it was going to be a new episode, so I was really excited to be like, oh, because they only made like twelve. Uh-huh. 
but they kind of mashed two or three together into one stage play, uh -huh. which is kind of disappointing. But the weird thing was everyone was dead on and looked the same. Except, except where John going Cleese. With... Interesting. It just, okay. There was something about that that... that it couldn't be recaptured. Okay. And I don't know whether it's that particular, because, you know, because he's John Cleese, but everybody else was like, it was like you stepped through a time machine. And even the set, like just yep. sitting, when I got in there, I just uh -huh. couldn't, I just, just staring at it that they just recreated this wow. set. It just blew my mind. Maybe and it was it's like, like, it's nothing. It's like a foyer and a, yeah, yeah. It's and nothing. a dinner and like, yeah. a, like a, like a dining room or whatever. Maybe it was the understudy or something like that. No, but it wasn't. You'd think you'd get two under. It even wasn't. if it was, you'd think you'd get two. But he was more. good. And he's like a guy in television and he was good, but it huh. felt more like he was kind of doing a John right. Cleese impersonation. I'd be more excited. Maybe we should do it one time. We should go to the Faulty Towers dining experience, mm. which is an unlicensed Faulty Towers stage situation in, in Melbourne yeah. sometimes where you go and you have a bad dinner and... <laughs> Basil faulty insults you or whatever. And the waiter <laughs> drops some dishes. I don't know what happens. That sounds great. But apparently it's terrible. And John Cleese is aware of it and he hates it apparently. So, <laughs> so uh, it's like, it's terrible as in like, it's just a terrible experience because it's a bad kind of knockoff. Yes, exactly. Yeah, 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 <laughs> oh, yeah. That sounds terrific. Yeah. Okay. Here's, here's a list. This is Ranker's list of the best British comedy series ever. We'll be the judge of that, Ranker. Okay. Faulty Towers, number one. Blackadder. Big yep. fan. First season sucks. A lot of I just uh, there's there's there not was, sucks. There was even a debate this week on Twitter about whether that's still bad or good. Somebody was like, "You're not a true Blackadder fan if you don't also like the first season." I like the one where they go to war, but yeah, the, the World War World One, World one. one. Yeah, 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 that's probably my favorite. Um, Do you like Blackadder back in time or whatever? No, <laughs> that absolutely not. Monty Python's Flying Circus, yep. absolutely fantastic. The It Crowd, still great. Yep. Um, Father Ted, yep. Keeping up appearances. Hate it. Cynthia Bouquet, yeah, I hate it also. Hate, yeah, same hate episode, it. 50 times. Yeah, 100%. Hate it. Uh, the Office She's good, gone. though. Oh, yeah. Everyone's is, good yeah, in yeah, that, yeah, for sure, but I but just it's hate just, it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, and I also feel like we don't 100% get that weird class system that she lives in where she always has to, as the title suggests, keep up appearances. I think we get it. Yeah, I get it. But it's literally the same it's episode. It's yeah. Uh, the Office, The Inbetweeners. Yep. I, I really like The Inbetweeners. I yeah. really enjoyed it at the time. I don't know if it's... Held up. What I think well. about the in between is, is it's a really accurate depiction of just you and your dumbass friends in high school, and you're just kind of muddling your way through, and yeah, you're, and you're sure. an idiot. Yeah, that so that is accurate. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hundred yeah. percent, Mason. Sorry, ten out of ten. <laughs> ten you. out of ten in agreement. <laughs> Are you being served garbage? Uh, only fools and horses. Do you remember only fools Don't and horses? Don't think I've seen it. Okay, it's that? got uh, it's David Jason and and Roger Lloyd Pack. It's oh, these, okay, these, that yeah. These two, they're like um, they're kind of like um. Odd job men, I guess. Driven. Kind of thing, yeah. Or junk shop owners. I don't know what it is. Does Mr. Bean count? Is that a sitcom? Yeah, of course it is. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Black Book's incredible. Yep. Peep Show. And um, uh, I like that Mitchell and Webb look way more than I like. I really like that Mitchell and Webb look. That and, Nazi sketch is incredible. Yeah. And so many also, if you, haven't if you haven't listened to it, before that Mitchell and Webb look, there was that Mitchell and Webb sound, which is ah. just an audio version of... Like a yeah. BBC audio version of the of that show. I didn't know that. Okay. It's, really, it's really good. I never got into Peep Show because I know it went for ages. Like it only yeah. recently finished as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, I never really. Yeah, I don't. I don't love it necessarily. But those guys are great. I think yeah. Mitchell and Webb. There's big horse on there. A oh, big train. Sorry, big train. I I don't know yet. Yeah. Um, have you seen my favorite Mitchell and Webb sketch? Or maybe it's not my favorite, but it's the one that sticks in my mind the most. Have you seen the one they play these London club entertainers called Fish and Chip? And they've been, <laughs> yes, they've, been they've been together like they're like a cabaret <laughs> weird cabaret comedy act called Fish and Chip, and they've been together for like thirty years. And then Chip decides he will go behind Fish's back so he can team up with Pin, like Roger Pin <laughs> from another dodgy London comedy act called Pin and Cushion. Yes. they want to. So Chip and Pin <laughs> want to team up so they can be the face of the chip and pin credit card system <laughs> and leave their respective comedy <laughs> partners in the dirt. But then it turns out that fish and cushion <laughs> team up instead <laughs> and, and and chip and pin are left kind of, you know, destitute. <laughs> it's funny. And it's, so it's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Uh, there's also the one where they do uh, Sherlock Holmes, but they can't decide on who plays Holmes or Watson. Yep. So every time they cut, they switch roles. Yeah. <laughs> it just did one scene. I love big talk. Yep, uh huh. And you know what? It's Mitchell and Webb look. I'm, I'm going to keep the, going, but this the is, in particular, but this is maybe my favorite. The what? It's because it was hosted by um, like Roger Big or something like oh, that. What is it? I can't remember. There's a mo they do small talk where they get like celebrities and football players to come on and, and do uh -huh. big talk, and they try to answer questions. 
And it's just, it might be one of the funniest things that I've ever seen. Is that the guy and he's like, let's solve something. Yeah, And he brings in experts and they're like, we should spend more money. He's like, brilliant, let's do it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, Come also, on, boffins. It's yeah, like that's right. Yeah, yeah. And there's Sir Digby Chicken Caesar, who's yes. uh, an insane man. Yeah. Uh, and there's Number Wang, which yeah. is obviously the, the nonsensical number based game show, yes. which some people playing seem to understand and some <laughs> people don't. Uh, Fleabag, incredible. Great yeah, show. Fleabag's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Abfab, not really for me, but I understand why yeah. people like it. I watch a bit of that. A lower low. Nah. The naughty French. No, that, that goes in the are you being served okay, category. Yeah. For, no Birds good. of a feather. Is that in there? As time goes by. Is that in there? No, it's not in here. Uh, look, look as the as the ranks get further and further, the young ones is here. Yep. Great stuff. Spaced, spaced. spaced. Yeah, of course, the Avengers is on this list. What? The British Avengers? No, no, absolutely not. Oh, Last of the Summer Wine. Oh, detect. Have you seen the Detectorists? No. It's a really good show. It's I wouldn't call it a laugh out loud comedy, but it's got McCren- Mc, Speaking of the Office, it's got Mackenzie Crook from the Office. Okay. And Toby Jones, who you know is the I know this. He's a yeah. you know he's that little man. Yeah, I know. You know Toby Jones. And they're they're a couple of metal detector enthusiasts who are apparently called detectorists. Okay. And it's just I've never ki- seen that. It's yeah. kind of a just a not I think it's on it's be on Netflix or Stan or something. And it's just a couple of nice men and they they, they have little adventures and they and they have some personal issues and, and they're just okay. you know it just it, it's about a friendship between two men with a weird hobby. Okay, it's what a about, good, really good show. Do you like Dad's Army? No, I don't like Dad's Army. Do you like Little Britain? I don't like Little Britain. I hate Little do Britain. you like Alan Partridge? I like yes, it, yeah. I do like Alan Partridge. Hundred percent, ten out of ten. How dare you, <laughs> uh, Mrs. Brown's Boys? No, no, atrocious. absolutely not. Yeah. Yes, Minister, that's good. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, really yeah. good. The thick of it. I've seen bits and pieces. Uh-huh. I haven't seen all of it. Good night, sweetheart. I, I watched every episode. Nicholas of that. Lindhurst again, back from Only Fools and Horses. So, Good Night Sweetheart, I really liked because it's about a guy who lives in the '90s, and if he walks down a certain alleyway, he gets transported to England during the war. Yes. And what he's able to do because he works for maybe a printing company or he knows somebody, he can forge banknotes convincingly, uh-huh. and he tells everybody in the past that he's a spy, which is why he keeps disappearing back to the '90s. So in the so in the war, people think he's like this super secret British spy. And in the 90s, just some guy. Okay. And he's balancing those two worlds. Mm. Yeah. It's good. Does he ever have to do any super spy stuff he does, during like, the war? Yeah, they catch him at one point and be like, you've been masquerading him? as a spy. They shoot him in the head. Yeah, so we need you to do this. I read Dwarf. Mm-hmm. Dwarf. Sorry. Thank you. Catastrophe with Sharon Horgan and Rob Delaney. That's a great show. I have not seen that. You should. It's You've on, talked about that a yeah, lot. Yeah, it's on though, Amazon, yeah. I think. Because so. he lives, Rob Delaney lives in England, doesn't he? does, he? yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vicar of Dibley. Uh, yep, fine. Also, we've mentioned it before. And again, this is just a list. But what a list. This is a great this is actually yeah. a great list. This is at 47, Toast of London. I think that's Toast a, of London's amazing. I think it's yeah. a great show. I think anything with Matt Berry involved is is terrific. Oh, and uh Garth Marenghi's Dark Place. Yeah. That's right up there as well. Absolutely anyway, I think is. I think we've covered every Yeah. Oh, and this look, not strictly speaking a comedy, but I was thinking about it earlier. Uh Minder. You ever seen Minder? What's that? No. Minder's about a uh, about a guy called Arthur Daly, mm. and he's like a like a low rent, uh, like a like a street hustler. Not okay. a street, but he's like always doing business deals on the streets of London. He's like a kind of like a you know like a low rent sure. kind, of, kind of guy, and he's got a minder who, who beats people up for him. Okay, yeah. is it newish? No, this is from the seventies. Okay, hang on, I'll find it for you. Sorry, I don't believe you. No, <laughs> I've got a computer as but well. But the guy who plays the minder also sang the theme song. Minder. It's not it. It's not. I what, don't know this at all. I know the faces. Oh, these one of those guys is in that you show about the old detectives or whatever, right? Yeah, Dennis Waterman. Yeah, yeah. George Cole and Dennis Waterman. No, I'm not strictly speaking, a comedy. Yeah, uh, but uh, it was good. Great, terrific. Yeah. Uh, and that's the show. That isn't is it? the whole show. Yeah. Uh, I had another tweet. We, we should do it. Why not? Yeah, Jordan Jr. says, "What are you all yours favorite war movies? Mine is Saving Private Ryan." What's your favourite one? I, you know, I was just thinking that. I was just thinking that the other day, James. This is all favourite stuff. Yeah, it's time. all my favourite stuff that I'm I'm burnt out on war movies. I think. Yeah, there's but that f- new Tom Hanks is in a boat one. Did you see the trailer for that? No, I did not see Tom Hanks in a boat. Yeah, he's in a boat. He was just in a boat for that other one, and we were in a boat. <laughs> yeah, Sully. Oh no, that was a plane. That was a floated. plane. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, no, but but the captain one was like, I'm the captain now. Captain Morgan. Captain Phillips. Okay. Mm. Great. Good times. Uh, I think it's Dunkirk. That's all right. I don't mind it. Yeah. Okay. But I think that's. I think 1917 is better than Dunkirk. Well, I haven't seen 1917, yeah. and I never will because I'm 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 at peak war movie. I don't want to watch any- that one. I'm I'm with you, uh-huh. but I really enjoyed it. They should do a different spin on historical war. You know, really mm. spice it up for me. Maybe have a new war. 
Perfect. But new content. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. 10 out of 10. I've just written some things here. Uh, Tigerland, which we actually mentioned last week. Yes. Which is technically not a war movie because it's all set in training camp. Oh, yeah. Uh, Bridge Over River Kwai. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Thin Red Line. Mm-hmm. I think he's better than Saving Private Ryan. And cool. uh, The Great Escape, even though it's historically inaccurate and whatever, I think it's just a bloody rip-rollicking good <laughs> It is a rip-rollicking good time, war yeah. movie that I yeah. really enjoy. What do you think of Three Kings? When was the last time you saw that? I like Three Kings a lot. Yeah. I'll, yeah. Good. It is good, but it's or one. Is of, it? It's one of the. No, I think it is good. It was, it was Spike Jones directed, and it's got Clooney and uh, some Wahlberg other. Wahlberg and Ice Cube. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, I feel like it, that's one of those movies where I think if I re, if I rewatched it, I would enjoy it more. But I think at the time it was pitched as like a comedy. It was. Pitched, oh, really? It was yeah, pitched yeah. as an Ocean's Eleven style comedy. It I was think. before Ocean's Eleven, wasn't it? Well, I think it was like ninety nine. <laughs> I don't know, but in my mind, it was pitched as that. But sure. it, it was definitely pitched as like. It's three dudes and they're in hijinks and doing a heist yes. in the desert kind of thing. Whereas in actual content, it was very, it was quite grim. And, and that's why I liked it. The, the realities of war. But at the time it was like, we're going to steal Saddam's gold. Here we go, boys. Yeah. And there is that. There is certainly that. But also yeah. people get shot a they lot. They really do. Yeah. yeah. There's a really quite a harrowing, Curtis is in it. There's quite a harrowing scene where somebody gets shot and oh, they have like the, a. You see the organs. Yeah. yeah but there's somebody gets shot and there's like a, they have a device in their body that to the, reinflate the, let the, the air out reinflate of the, lung. the lungs, and they've they've been f- thrown by the wayside, and nobody else can get to them, and they're yeah. dying, and then somebody's got to reinflate the lung. Yeah. It's really quite, it's yeah. quite something. It's great. Yeah. Anyway, is that the show? That's a whole show. Thank Yay! you everybody for listening. Thank you everybody for saying a nice thing on the internet and tweeting at us oh my and God. bloody bloody telling a friend because that's how we get new listeners and really also is. for leaving a nice review. James, do you have a nice review? No, I do. It's from Fisto Fire. It says Maryland was here. Five stars. Wow. What a remarkable book. A little hard to follow, but truly inspiring. The story of love, loss, and triumph as told by two ineffable hosts uh, uh, as both astounding and irregular. Uh, the unreliable na- narrator, the non-linear narrative, the un- unmitigated <laughs> gall. This is the future of storytelling, and I'm so excited to see what these guys do next. Five stars. It'll just be more of this. It'll be uh, exactly the same as this <laughs> podcast. We might even accidentally release the same episode next week. As I well. could just read this review in like a year and yeah. not realize mm-hmm. I've already read it. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, you can just do it in app. Open your app and just scroll down. Yeah, but like, it definitely boom. helps us, I think. Massively. If you want to get in contact with us, you can go to Weekly Planet Pod at Facebook, at Gmail, at Twitter, at Bandcamp. On Twitter, I am uh, Wikipedia Brown. And on Instagram, I'm Nick Maso, N I C K M A S. That's yeah, so you, true. You're Mr. Sunday Movies Everywhere, correct? So true. You can also go to the uh, Planet Broadcasting website. That's yeah. planetbroadcasting.com. You can sign up to the newsletter from the great Rob Collings. That's right. He's at the Weekly Planet on Twitter. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. 100% that guy. No. 110% that guy. Okay. Okay, you can have yeah, that one. There we go. Nice. I've got a new catchphrase. <laughs> and more too. accurate. That's exactly right. Mm. Uh, you can also go to the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group where we have very civil, very fun conversations about all st- things pop culture. Or you're out. You bloody, yeah, we'll bl- <laughs> put you in your bloody ear and, and pop culture and podcasts and all si- uh, kinds of stuff. Today, because it's International Women's Day mm. at the time of recording, uh, only women can start uh, threads. And we're going to keep that for the rest of the year. That's thank God. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> when is it going to be, though, Mason, as I said to you, an International Men's Day? November the 8th. Yeah, but when for men? I think. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yep. Like a men's, an International Men's Day for men. <laughs> yes. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That'd be no, oh, God. Thank, that'd be so good. It's got a scent of Irish spring about it. <laughs> uh, so that's that's uh, having a good time over there. Yeah. Um, if you would like to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies if you want to chuck in a buck. We would certainly appreciate yeah. that. Uh, you can also go to the Amazon affiliate link in our episode description where you can get the ultimate box set of just British comedies. It's 100 discs long, <laughs> DVDs. Oh it's got God. Cynthia Bouquet's face on it. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> and on one side, her slobby husband. That's right. Or whatever, whoever he is. No, he's not Oh, slobby. no, wait, because there was, there was the a, other slobby relatives. The slobby right? relatives. Okay, one side, it's the slobby relatives. If it was British comedy, the back of it would be like a mule's ass or something. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. Uh, but we would definitely appreciate that. Um, we've also got some T-shirts on tpublic.com, including some fan-made ones this week that I discovered. If you yes. just search for The Weekly Planet, as I did, you can find uh, a couple of uh, a Reginald Alert T-shirt yes. and, a, and, a, and a Regitron T-shirt. Which, Terrific. Which I'm very excited about, which is a reference to a thing that I used to psychologically torture your son. <laughs> um, and But also regular regular Weekly Planet T-shirts, yeah, all, kinds right, of, yeah. all kinds of logos and stuff, which is very exciting. Mm. Uh, thank you to the Brute and the Basilisk and Marakam for all our musical themes. Oh, my goodness. Next week, we're probably going to talk about Bloodshot. I'd imagine so, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, my battery charger started working again, but then it stopped working. God okay, damn. so next week, we're going to talk, we're going to review battery chargers because James is going to buy every battery charger on the internet. Let's see what's up. We're going we're gonna to review them. It's going to be a tax write-off we're somehow. We're going to kiss them. While they're plugged in? Yeah. 
Pretty cool. <laughs> I know. Nice. We're going to turn this into a Jackass style show. <laughs> That's right. We just lick charges. Yeah. <laughs> Good. All right. Uh, yeah. So see Bloodshot. I guess. You don't have to. No, you really don't. Let's, yeah. Don't worry. We'll spoil I the su- point. Okay. Here's the thing. I don't think there's going to be any spoilers in Bloodshot ultimately. Mm. Right? I mean, what's they going to spoil? He gets Bloodshot and yeah. then he's like, you made me this, but guess what? Now it's I'm- actually that. <laughs> I'm going to you punch your head off. control me, but, but... But I'm controlling... But this, yeah. took away my memories or gave me memories. Well, I'm going to give you a memory of me punching you <laughs> in your nuts. <laughs> Bam. You know? Do you reckon they're going to call him Bloodshot? Do you reckon he's going to get the big dot on oh, his chest? I, 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 do you think it... He's going to have the white skin? Yeah, at the end, I reckon. Better. Yeah. Mm. Do you think this is the end, the start and the end of the Valiant Cinematic Universe? Yes. <laughs> me too. You never Which know. is a shame. Yeah. I want to see a Ninjak movie. I want to see an Exo Man of War movie. I want to see a Turok Dinosaur Hunter movie. No, these are all good I movies. I want to see a Magnus Robot Fighter movie. Okay. That's all the Valiant movies I want to see. <laughs> that's it? Yeah, that's right. Cool. Arbogen, no thank you. You don't care if they're bombs? You just, just I just want to see them. Yeah. I want to see them. For good or ill. Just break out the, the all the dinosaur uh, prosthetics and, and animatronics from Super Mario Brothers. Easily Bring done. Bring them back, you know? Yeah. You're practically making money. That's right. All right. See you guys. Grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. 110%. Yeah. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you.